Welcome back to another fantastic day of fights here at Street Fighter League Japan 2023. We are currently in the second half of this season and the remaining teams are playing for playoffs and points occurring later on this year we've already established the leaderboards for now but we could be seeing some massive shakeups occur today before we get to the uh main matches i don't know vicious my guy what do you think about the menu that we have ready for the people uh you know i feel like it's gonna be a full course meal as expected every single time you know we still have the home and away rule set as we usually do here in the world of Street Fighter 6, or at least for Street Fighter League, I should say specifically. But we had a little bit of a change up, right? In the first half, we had nine teams in total to face off against each other in a double round robin scenario. It's narrowed it down to six teams. And then we talked about what happens in the second phase. We bring back the home and away spots, right? With the away team, they're locking in their order with their player order, along with their character selection, as well as their character type, whether it's classic or modern. That's going to be thrown up ahead of time. So the home team having the advantage to get the counter pick. Now the first and second matches both being 10 points apiece. The third match, the anchor spot, the ever important spot being worth 20 points. And of course, if it ever comes down to a tie, we still have that sudden death battle worth five points. But it all comes to something really, really important towards the end of the season, right, Sinkola? That's right, playoffs, as we mentioned, four teams will be moving on. And of course, we'll be squaring things down to see who's going to be the champion of Street League Japan, but also who moves on to face off against the US and EU teams who've all been announced already for the world championship that's going to be super sick but of course we're getting ahead of ourselves just a little bit we still have a lot of games to play so have a lot of action to go through there's also the money that's on the line to stay fine eight million yen which will be coming up the screen at some point that's five million two million and one million respectively i'm doing that a little bit early so y'all can get your calculators and uh make your uh, exchange rates and, and do all that math right there but back to business today is going to be really sick as we are in the second part of the season, we do have runbacks, rematches, and clapbacks. And that means we're going to be seeing possibly something different, or we might be seeing some double jeopardy. First match of the day is going to be FAP Gaming going up against Shinobiism Gaming. Previously, that was Shinobiism Gaming taking that victory 30 to 10. Yeah, and then followed by Cyclops Athlete Gaming Osaka going up against Saishun Kan Soul Kumamoto with uh, Team Soul being on the away spot. And uh, followed by a very, very special ending to our three course meal that we have. It's going to be Gyogan facing off against Detonation Focus Me. So it's going to be really, really cool to see. Now, the points don't necessarily carry over when it comes to second phase. And uh, I also want to say that this is technically their third time around facing off against each other. So there's been a lot of uh, a lot of significant shakeups already in regards to the meta, not even just in the realm of Street Fighter League, but in the world of Street Fighter 6. We're starting to see some of the characters really, really get developed. But I feel like Japan, they've been like so steadfast with developing how modern is played, if I'm being honest. Like we're going to see potentially another modern player from the side of Shinobiism Gaming, right? Mochi being one of them uh, to start things off. Then, of course, we have with Saishun Kan Sol Kumamoto. Who could ever forget about Shuto being the pioneer of modern Marisa? But again, that's just two to speak of the many in the land of Japan. But we'll see if it plays out to anything else other than those two. But as uh, St. Cola had mentioned, starting things off with FAV Gaming versus Shinobiism with their third time around, it's going to be exciting. Absolutely. You know, we're going to break down what happens, what occurs once again here. You see how much they'll be earning. We talked about the yen definitely mattering, all that prize pool being ridiculous. But again, what really matters is to move on to fight the US and EU at Capcom Cup to get all that money that closer and closer at the prize pool that you use for that clear right there to get a lot that uh, you would you would use right vicious i mean i would i would love to use that send it over my way let me taste it let me taste test it for you because i can't i can't put it on my head baby you know what i mean like let me demonstrate it but i can put this to good use that would be actually cool if i got myself a g2 fully tuned out pc dang it comes in stock with a 4090 color me happy and oh man listen something that's so clutch that you need in your pc especially for gaming nowadays m.2 ssd when you get two terabytes of that that's actually actually phenomenal especially with how big games are nowadays hey you can fit how many world tours in there i'm not going to do the math for you but i bet it's possible either way it's going to be an exciting time here for street fighter league as we get ourselves ready for another week of play but yeah i would love 
to use any of those products. Even the hair care products, man. Send it my way. Why not? Why not? But what we're going to be doing right now is starting off with our very first match as we mentioned. FAV Gaming going up against Shinobism Gaming. We'll start with the Nasty Ninjas himself. The swankiest ninja in the business, though. Starting off, Johnny with that Monarch and possibly the poisonous Aki. We'll have to see if that occurs. But after that is the Grave Maker himself. Ever optimal, ever mechanic. It is Fujimura. After that's going to be the Vanguard, but has been way more in front with his fantastic Ken play. It is Yamaguchi and also DJ, I should say, but the Shobis and Prime stand fine with Midshirn, the modern men coming through. He is one of them on that loop. It is Momochi rounding off the charge. This team has been ridiculous. Previously, at least the last time we saw them fight FAB Gaming, they had taken them down 30 10. Let's we'll see what happens this time. Without a doubt, one of the strongest teams that we could ever ask for, and also just as confident with their team composition and also strategy. I gotta say, it's gonna be really exciting to see how these guys fare off against this upcoming team, especially being from the away side. Let's take a look at who they're facing off against. It's FAV Gaming coming in with the advantage of home side, but also it's the judge, jury, and executioner, none other than Papa Bonch, and he's ready to put the kids to bed as well. Followed by the fighting game prodigy, the number one scout, the FGC genius, Tokido. Better lock in and better lock on. It's the eyes of desperation. You don't want to miss any bit of his gameplay. All being led by the strongest halberd, the number one spear in your arsenal, Sakonoko. And that is your composition of FAV Gaming. I really do love this composition, man. It is such a good blend of skill. It is such a good blend of character diversity. <laughs> and I think the age range is actually pretty wild. Uh, Sakunoko, obviously, the, the oldest member of the group, still can be considered one of the strongest, not even just for the group, but also in the totality of the FGC. Yeah, absolutely. And you say on the younger side of things, Bonchan, Papa Bonchan himself, so they send up, oh, okay, Fujimura going up first, Yamaguchi second, and then the modern man himself. I almost said shoot, though, but it is Momochi coming up to play last. Now, we saw how Fuj uh, Fujimura was able to clean up Sako last time in the anchor position, but he's coming up first with that Ken. Who do you send up against him? I mean, Fujimura. Sorry, Fujimura yeah, with the Ken is... is uh, He's, he's been a little bit problematic. I think whoever you shoot at him, whoever you throw up at him is going to be a hard call. I would say Ken to Ken if you're looking at it for matchups. I think sending in Tokido would be just fine, but that's that's a little tough call. We'll see. Yeah. It is going to be Tokido. I think just to neutralize the threat of the Ken, why not throw in the mirror match? Um, there's other different looks that you can send that way, but I think overall this is the biggest challenge that Tokido wants to go through. Go through. This is like the number one hurdle that any player of his caliber wants to go through in taking down the mirror match. They have a lot of pride on it, so I think that's something Fujimura easily expects as well. <laughs> I think last time we saw Tokido, he lost a Nauman in that mirror match where I think a lot of people, even me, kind of expected that Tokido would take that considering how strong he is and in damn near every mirror match that he plays in any game. But I think you're right in terms of having that honor of like, man, I need to be the best Ken out here and prove to you that this is my character. However, Fujimura is a different sort of mechanical beast, bro. And when it comes down to being optimal and finding what's strong with the character, he is one of the best. His game plans are absolutely ridiculous. In contrast to Tokido, who I feel like is more simple, driver slight punch, you know, you know, working into the corner whenever you can. Maybe not the most optimal all the time, but his footsies, being the genius gamer himself, take him to the top. Mm. Yeah, funny enough, when you look at the composition of the away side, it's Ken, DJ, and Luke. Yeah, it's kind of tough. I think saving the JP for the anchor match for the modern Luke is going to be pretty nice. And also against DJ, I wouldn't mind having Luke for that either, or even a Chun Li for that. So I think overall, having the Ken versus Ken, even Fujiburo was kind of surprised at it as well. Like looking at the uh, pre game interview, why is Ken facing Ken? He says, I don't know, but I'll do my best. Um, and then you actually mentioned uh, the matchup that Tokido had in the previous week. 
Uh, Tokido actually got to touch up on that, saying he was practicing with Nauman, so he is definitely ready with uh, the matchup for Ken versus Ken. So it does make sense that he wants to kind of like get redemption from his performance of last week. And uh, looking at it thus far, um, the overall stats too, I'd imagine these guys have been killing it when it comes to their point earnings. But let me get that stat. ASAP. Perfect. I got it. All right. So, taking a look at the first stage of it all. Five out of seven wins from the side of Tokido. 60 points to his name. We missed that graphic a little bit earlier. But Fujimura coming on in there. Dang, that's a lot of points, man. 100 points. Triple digits for your team? That is impressive. But he's got seven wins to his name out of eight. And the only one he lost was a sudden death battle. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Oh. Yeah, he lost a Legend Slayer that was uh, jazzy. That, but that was it. This is the first to one. Every other position he's been fine in, whether it be first to twos or first to threes, it don't matter to him. He still was able to get these wins against dang near all the top players out here. Nemo, Fudo, Mago, Sako. You name it, he's claimed it. Goichi previously in the last time, it was, uh, it looks like Gachakun and Goichi after that. So he has been taking down champion after champion. I mean, he's a champion of, of himself, but you know, his kid has been fantastic. But I am curious to see what Tokido has learned in that matchup. It felt like things were kind of slipping last time. We saw him fight Nauman, and Nauman was able to get the better of uh, Tokido up in the corner, like his defense was lacking and slacking, which is, you know, strange enough considering Tokido I feel like works best there when we've seen him historically. But I'm curious to see what Fujimura is going to offer. I mean, even though he's surprised, you know, that Fujimura is going to be always ready for anything that occurs or, or happens. Every time we see Fujimura come up to the back, he's like, oh, I'm a little bit nervous or I'm a little bit shaky. It doesn't seem like that in the match. Maybe that make, makes him focus up a little bit. I'm not sure, but either way, like he is always on point. We'll see what happens in this Ken versus Ken. Who's Ken enough? Any other day, they'd be a 10. But right now, they are both just Ken. Let's take a look here in the mirror. Oh. And it's so difficult like too. Fujimura's already bulldogging Tokido to the corner pretty quickly. Ooh, mini kick. It's a top two DP follow right after it. I want to see again that defense that Tokido just didn't have as the set had went down with Nauman. Nice gets the counter kind of with a light kick DP right after it. Very aware. He's counter at states. Oh, that fierce ringing out so late. A big punish counter too. Tokido. Getting the big rebuttal. Trying to check out the roundhouse. And fireballs to push his way out. Fujimura, I like that. It could be a little risque, but I think overall, it's been working out. Almost dead even in life. The resources are being expended. Mm. See, so Kido just trying to avoid that crouching kick as much as possible. Backstepping to not let that crouching kick be connecting. However, both in burnout. Ooh, wasn't able to get a punch. Maybe a little bit too far out for that minus four trade. Both equal the I mean, trade again. They're both in burnout, right? So those frames, those frame data are going to be different. Oh yeah, you are right. Oh, up until that point, uh, and I love the finisher too. Very, very optimal with that confirmed too. We'll like that from from Tokido. Confident walking with that crossing kick, enhanced Tatsu. Get that OK going to full jump fears. counter hit. Fujimura again trying to get that crossing kick. You see, just Tokido walking back to avoid that. No way! No way! That was... Oh my god, that was sick. Tokido, disgusting. Go big or go home with these big reversals. In Burnout's Fujimura, he saves that drive gauge. Beneficial could line up some drive impact. Even the idea of that is dangerous. There it is. You're able to get the splat and it's a wrap. Tokido, well done. Oh yeah, that's how he's cooking his steaks. That steak is Fujimura slabbed up too. That is a well done steak for sure. Nah, I wouldn't advise eating it that way though. But Tokido again, picking the right spots to let the drive impact rip as well, considering Fujimura had a full three stock of gauge down below. So really, really smart and really calculated in the approach. The perfect parry punish against the fireball. Good eye. Take that outshot off the table. Finally, Crouchy Mini Kick lands. Goes for the enhanced Tatsu for the maximum amount of Oki. Double dashes in with the jabs. 
Jin Rai, nice interruption here from Tokido. Gets some space up in this place to back him up to mid screen. Again, those fireballs might be problematic. And again, drive rush jab is still Tokido's way to play with Ken. I wonder why we haven't really seen a lot of the target combos into. Wait a minute, let me let me hold my breath real quick. Get level one more than enough, and it is Kenoff. I was actually kind of curious after every one of the target combos that we've seen, we haven't really seen enhanced Tatsu as much. I, maybe I'm missing the wrong sequence, but or I'm like misidentifying the sequences. But we've seen a lot of regular Tatsus in some of these combos. There we go, enhanced Tatsu. Yeah, welcome to the corner. A lot, a lot more here from Fujimura. Definitely see a lot more from him than Tokido. Not sure why, but that's where you're gonna get the most amount of Oki for this character. Toledo is the one better off. Backs up for the cross gun DP. Well timed. Drive rushing in and keeping that pressure up as much as possible. Try to kill that drive gauge too. On block, this is not so good for Fujimura. He's worried about getting thrown for punish counter, but blocking is deleting that drive gauge off the deck. We've got a single hit sequence for Tokido. As soon as he builds up this level three, which he will, by the way, the single hit into a confirm or a punish will lead to Fujimura's death. Man, he baited him from that far. Ken's crouching. He's crouching, he's in, he's in trouble. I like it. The level two, knowing the level three won't kill. This is actually really smart. Force the burnout, but also have an invincible move just in case behind you. Dude, Fujimura, the resource management. Good block. Can't have no caps though. Uh, he can't jump, I knew it. He couldn't jump anymore. Fujimura already establishing the grave against Sakito. Right, taking his heels. Still going for that fireball game, not taking it off the table. Tokido has been perfect with these perfect parries all the time, so I like him still establishing that as a poke. Crash the kick comes through, goes for the gen right, lets it fly right to level three. And again, a big lead and kills some of that drive gauge too. Not too bad, all things considered. The Man, he tried to contest that drive Ooh. rush forward jab? No way. Don't get thrown. Yep. I like the offensive sequence from Tokido. Despite being in burnout, it's fine with him. We want to get some Good room. jump out. Get check. Yeah, timing against these fireballs. Try to find a jump in. The DP's right there, though. Second last, the plus frames back throw, but he's back in business with that drive gauge. You gotta be super careful right now. Drive rush in, stand fierce. This should be the way he's gonna spin the super to seal the deal. And he is so ready to count the, fire, count the fireballs continuously. Tokido staying close, staying optimal, and staying dangerous. Man, I meant to say jump out actually. That defensive call from Tokido was genius too. You can see Fujimura like inch forward. Towards the end of that set, he was trying to inch forward, get a back throw, and Tokido immediately went for the back jump. That was so, so slick of him to reassess and regain control and uh, push to push Fujimura away. And now we talk about being up close and personal, but like in burnout, it's a lot tougher. Like once you lose your sequencing and once you lose your turn to play, like just your turn in general and, and leave yourself negative, that's that's hard. It's hard to contest against. You're gonna eat a lot of chip damage. And the way that Fujimura has been playing, I don't, I wouldn't even wanna, wanna risk taking that much chip damage with the amount of health that he had left or also, or any of the, the meter that he had left, I should say. So that was, uh, Really, really well done, real, really well thought out from uh, Tokido. I mean, I feel like his game plan just overall was really well thought out. We saw the super, he used that super instead of doing like an ODDP to save his drive gauge, to put Fujimura in burnout. Everything just felt really calculated, the driver's jabs and things like that. I'd also, I wish we had a stat for how many times like he was aiming for the drive gauge or like drive gauge depletion because it felt like he was aiming for that more often than not. More than Fujimura, there were some good moments from Fujimura we caught him ducking a few times to get these extensions and these combos and things like that, but it just was not enough. A lot of good anti from both sides. I thought there were more on the side of Tokido because we did see like the backup cross up DP that was well timed, but a lot for Fujimura, but this did not a matter, you know, account too much. Fujimura taking a few throws. Text though, from the side of Tokido, alternating that defense continuously, not only was it just him tacking throws when he can, but also as you pointed out, back jumping outside the throw range too as well to not even have to hold that pressure and take the chance and just uh, not getting run up DP or whatever. I do like that from Tokido, just switching up that defense continuously and rotating those options to make it hard for Fujimura to kind of really do anything. And on top of all that, in terms of defense, the perfect parries against the fireballs to get punishes, to stay close and to keep his drive gauge healthy. Well thought out by Tokido.
No doubt, no doubt. You can see all the stats coming through. Obviously, the anti airs on point, OD reversals, tech throws, drive impact, everything on this side. We had the full course meal, really. We had the uh, the entire inventory used up from the side of FAV Gaming Zone Tokido. But that establishes our first 10 point game on the side of FAV Gaming. It's up to Yamaguchi to take some of those points back. We'll see if uh, it's going to be answered by. Bonchan. We call we also called this one too, setting out the Luke against DJ. Mm -hmm. You say the JP for the finals for the uh, anchor match. All right. Bonchan coming up to fight. So Bonchan didn't get to play last time that these two teams faced off. And uh he has been definitely cooking people with that Luke, has been definitely watching his streams and he's getting more and more accurate to this character. I feel like he rarely ever misses the perfect nickel combos. But uh, we'll see Yamaguchi, though, is a beast in and of himself. We saw how he took down Pugera with that sick trade conversion last time. And then how he's been working in the World Warrior. The fact that he had completed World Warrior and got, you know, first place in the hardest region is nothing to scoff at at all. Like, his DJ might be one of the best, if not top three or top two best in the business. Yeah, he fought, um, oh, he fought Dogura, right? Last time? Oh, my bad. Dogura. 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 Gotcha. Dogura. All right. I was, I was looking for that stat. I'm like, wait, did I write that wrong? <laughs> I was like, wait, did I just... My bad, my bad. <laughs> I'm gonna, I might be getting old, my bad. Um, but this is a good match. This is a really good look. I think um, setting up the DJ, sorry, setting up the Luke for the DJ matchup is going to be a really, really good look for... Uh, FAV Gaming overall, right? We talk about Bonchan's performance as well. Hey, not too bad. He got himself four out of six thus far uh, in the first phase. He's taken down a bunch of other players like Pugera, uh, Fudo. I'd have to see the match result between him and Fudo, actually. I think, um, let me see. If I remember correctly, when they played, I don't think, yeah, it was the DJ, right? Yeah, okay, so Bonchan beat Fudo three to one. I think he's got more than enough confidence specifically in the DJ matchup. And even if it wasn't a first to three, right? If it wasn't three out of five territory, if you're taking a look, he won first, lost second, won the third. So I think overall he's in good condition to face off in the DJ matchup. And he's not the only, I feel like, it's been back and forth, though. Dang, now that I really look at it, he had to fight off against Dolgora as well, but he lost. Man, that's it could be a coin toss. Who knows? Let's see if Yamaguchi is like the DJ to, to beat this time around. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, if Bonchan can beat both Fudo and Pugera, but lose to Dolgora, does that equal enough to take down Yamaguchi? I'm about to, I'm about to ride it all of the chalkboard right now. Like behind yeah, me, just... because by association, Yamaguchi beat Dolgura last week. So by association, does that make him the stronger DJ? I don't know, man. We'll see. We'll have to see. I mean, like World Warrior, you know, style of things. I would say he is like up there with Fudo. I think they're tied right now. We'll get in that later in terms of Fudo also winning World Warrior. But, you know, Yamaguchi has such a good defensive style. He's had that since five. It'd be hard to kind of break it down. I mean, all these DJ players play so differently. We've seen Dogra just have these psychic calls. We've seen the likes of Yamaguchi hard to break down, almost have just these ridiculous charge timings when it comes to anti-airs. And his trade conversions have been fantastic. And Fudo, just hella aggressive and always able to convert off of just jabs into Sobats continuously. They're also different, so they'll definitely uh, have to deal with a different look. But I feel like for either side, you have dealt with these characters continuously. They're very common. DJ is definitely on the rise. I feel like people are starting to understand how strong DJ is. We've seen him win. Jaheim recently winning a CPT. And World Warrior is starting to get claimed by the DJs. They're starting brother. to get a handle. Jabby M, my bad. Didn't mean to give him like that. You remember Jabby M? He was there last time. year. Yeah, it was at CPT Finals. Yeah. Yeah, he's just the homie, man, from South well. Africa. He was super sick. He was really, really nice. DJ said, so, right now. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Yamaguchi said, like, last time he said, uh, we lost one game, but we won the second game. Bonchan said, Tokido did great, but uh, I'll make a win happen to lower the pressure for the anchor match. But well, it's looking difficult up in this corner, is it not? Ugh. This is gonna be so, so difficult to traverse once he gets, okay. Hey, this is great. Side switch, standing line. Oh, that was actually a different variation. Yamaguchi, I don't know what that was. I think that was a missed time on his, uh, on his up kicks. It looked like instant jump short. Oh, there's no way. There's no beast mode baby here. Safe jump. 
Or hit and get it. Checking below. Backing away. Oh, no, wait. Oh, you can't do that. He walked back to bait out the drive impact. So not enough to kill, but the shimmy and the lion after that will. Bro, he is dangerous. What a beast. What an actual unit. Ooh. What a comeback. I am actually, I am speechless. Almost speechless about that. Jesus. So impressive. Confident style here from Bonchan. Nice back dash oh. with a throw. Like that early. Bars building up here for Bonchan. Down the bottom. Yamaguchi trying to get that sway play. Finds a jump fierce to call off the sway. Dumping out the damage. Bonchan with these perfect knuckle combos. Level 3 just yet. Wants to seal the deal with it. Oh, he's buffering two on the way back. Just in case, he's looking for it. Four throw. Oh. It's gonna be a heavy air slasher. Follow behind him. What a punish counter. Do you spend the level three here though? Yeah, he's Look, looking for, yeah, it. for Yamaguchi. Kill. Yeah. Very expensive. He put his head down on that too. As soon as the combo was over, I looked at the player cam. He wasn't too happy about having to spend the level three, but tying it up in the rounds is a necessity. An absolute necessity against Pong Chan. You got to. Look at the bar at the bottom here for Bonchan. He would have killed. He would have got that one hit into level three. So it definitely makes sense to have to spend the win. But yeah, it's unfortunate you don't go in this round with that bar and you're getting punished. Not about the damage, it's about that positional advantage. After the perfect parry. Oh, he wants to kill the drive oh. game after that chaser. All right. But it's not going to do it yet. Mm. He gets to do it after this, though. Four throw. Oh, that is going to hurt. Oh, my God. It was punish counter. It's going to hurt and it caused the burnout. This is so aggressive. Bon Chan, I really love this look. He has to, he wants to finish the games early so we can put the kids to bed early. I like this strategy. Pop up, Bon Chan incoming. Definitely putting Yamaguchi to sleep with that defeat. The drive impacts continuously after going again for the drive gauge. I really like this meta of recognizing if you kill the drive gauge, you can kill the character. And this character even more so, not able to have those reversals. And now as quick as other characters, so. Caught up in that corner is dangerous. And Bonchan off to a fantastic start. Yeah, and I love that route he just took. It was a it was a safer confirm off of a drive rush forward dash. Or sorry, drive dash forward into crouching jab. I think that was really, really smart of him to go into the crouching medium punch regardless of the outcome. That is a criminal offense. Jesus. Neutral jump fierce and eclipse. What was that? The back the back roundhouse, I think? That was it was so disgusting. So ready for these entry options. Wakes up with the level one. Back him off, and he cannot win the spin. That bar, the OD, gets the kill. Save that bar for that purpose. Have that OD reversal. Now Bonchan dominantly on set point, avoiding that drive rush oh medium. Classic punish. How is he so ready for everything Yamaguchi wants to present? Yeah, Bonchan is definitely being so optimal right now. This is a different transformed Bonchan. It's insane. He's locked. He's locking Yamaguchi down. He's putting him on timeout. He's also going to put him in night night. That is it. Bonchen didn't even need to go into any other drive gate or sorry, any any other uh, super art meter. He was just going full full damage from normal. This guy was mad optimal against Yamaguchi today, and that is a huge huge statement in the line of who has the better luke more so than who has the better dj because man i don't think yamaguchi really got to play no, all the fantastic things you want to do as dj drive rush them through with these uh buttons again either it's like sweep off the feet or medium starters and things like that got deleted and depleted you saw him walk back outside these ranges that's just great footsie play right there to understand what range you're going to drive rush in with. These buttons are going to operate, but also the calls and maybe like the tendencies that Yamaguchi wanted to do. He's been locking in and studying because he was damn near right on every single call. The neutral jump too as well. And then optimizing whenever he got a chance. Just nasty play, bro. I think it was a good call too. We, we, we started to see that develop in the meta as uh more of the DJs starting to become more prominent in the scene. Neutral jumping against the drive rush has been such a such a good tactic as well. But if you took a look at Bonchan, right, he 
spaced out majority of the drive rushes against Yamaguchi so that it whiffed on the ground. Then the one time he decided to go in and kind of like bulldog even more so in that round, in the specifically the last round, he propped himself with a neutral jump against Yamaguchi. That was actually so sick because we haven't even seen the neutral jump tactic to bait out the drive rush as much up until that round. So that was like saving it for nationals, saving it for the, the opportune moment. It was so well played, dude. Man, his ground game and his movement and his spacing was immaculate this game. I think, to be honest, Yamaguchi shouldn't even feel bad today. It just so happened that Bonchan was playing at a different level. And that's fine. That's totally acceptable. Like, look at the amount of damage he's done already in the stats, right? He's got great anti airs, one of one, that's totally fine. He had the OD reversals, to call it out correctly. Tech throws one out of five. Listen, that still could have gone either way. It could have been just fine, but the drive in back two hitting. Bonchan truly was playing as the better player today. But Yamaguchi again, he'll, he'll bounce back. He'll bounce back for sure. But we'll have to see what happens here. FFV Gaming in a fat lead right here. Can the modern man, newly minted modern man, I should say, Momochi, come through with the salute? Now, if things do go bad and it doesn't work out for him, he can go to Classic. He's fantastic with both forms. But I think modern has been one of the picks for him lately we saw last time. But it's going to be Ryusei, as we call, you know, having that JP to kind of close things out. That's good in any matchup, really, to be honest. Fantastic. It's any character in the eyes of desperation will definitely put people to the ring with that level two or any sort of mix that jp can do but i am curious to see though what momochi has gathered in terms of you know battering his uh, modern play we saw previously when he fought kazunoko he got open up low a lot and i wondered if that's like a thing for modern players where they're so like dedicated and looking for anti and things like that and walking back and adjusting their spacing with fireballs and such that they're not blocking low or if that was just like a day something that was happening on the day here for momochi and kazunoko was just landing those lows continuously we'll have to see what he's learned for defense what he's shored up for the modern play because jp no matter what you play is going to be hard to deal with i think with that statement in mind it's not going to be too bad of a look i feel like for momochi as he doesn't have to worry about lows as much coming in from uh jp specifically unless it came from a drive rush right because crotch medium kick is yeah. not going to be cancelable from jp um but it is going to be pretty great as a uh gap closer right drive rush forward crossing medium kick it does push him relatively uh far out there it moves him forward um and it's great to kind of be a combo starter for him but outside of that, I don't think it's, it's very interesting to put it that way because I don't think it's it's a lot to really fear JP in that regard. You don't have to worry about being checked low unless you're point blank, right? Then that's that's where the low kicks kind of come in. The low light kick, I should say, comes in. But yeah, other than that, I don't think uh, it's going to be too big of a deal for uh, Omochi. But even if that wasn't a factor, right, I think modern loop can really pose a threat to whatever it is that jp wants to do because the reaction time is cut to a lot simpler measure right you don't have to worry about reacting to certain things that jp is going to be doing out there you could do modern fireball if you want to close the gap you could do modern uppercut against the teleport if you see it i think this is going to be quite the challenge more so for ryusei than it is for momochi yeah, I'm curious to see how this occurs. Also, there's the, the matter of like how many times do you fight modern and like what's your game plan against modern? What are, what are your. It is, an, it is another matchup. It is like a different matchup. You can't run it like you would against like a classic loop. They lose certain tools, but they gain that easy reaction time. They have those reactions that you put it out. So it's going to be maybe hard to, to gauge with fireballs and things like that. You can't maybe throw out the fake ghost as much. You might get clipped and hit. Even the normal ghost might be a threat. So you have to maybe strategize a little bit differently and uh, kind of tailored to the modern reaction that they're going to have. But Ryusei, looking at his stats, he's two out of six previously in the first stage. He hasn't played the second stage just yet. The only victory he was able to get was against uh, Goichi and Shuto. And that was at least his last appearance uh, in the first stage. Uh, we'll see what happens in this stage, though. For Omochi, let's see his stats. Two out of six so far, as we mentioned previously, lost to Kazunoko the last time that we saw him. See if we can get some points on the deck. This matters quite a bit for FPV Gaming. They close it. It's a 40 baller. If they don't, Shinobiism still in. 
Right, all things considered, too. Again, all of these teams have played in the previous week. We're slowly accumulating those points to figure out who is going to be in the top four spot for playoffs, but more importantly, who's going to claim the number one spot to move on into the grand finals by default? Really, really curious and excited to see it because, again, we have all of the teams slowly coming together for both US and Euro, the European League, the EU League. It's going to be a very interesting race, man. Just putting things in perspective, man. We got Street Fighter 6 already here. We're playing out Street Fighter League already, right? Like, we didn't have Street Fighter League in the first couple of years of Street Fighter 5. So that already is an exciting time to see who's going to make it into the big dance to face off against each other. Because I love team battles, man. I always like to see team battles included at any major, whether it's an exhibition or there's something on the line. We kind of get that feeling back with Capcom Cup, right? The celebration of the players. Yeah. We get a team battle format, and we also get the singles match too, along with the last chance qualifier. Like that's, that is a huge, huge ordeal. We're going into it again. This is the general's battle. The anchor spot for 20 points. Will Shinobiism Gaming lock in and get all the points possible, or will it be FAV Gaming to respond? Other way around, excuse me. FAV Gaming is looking for the 40. My mistake. Sorry about that. All right. Already starting to a fantastic start. Mochi has to call up in the corner. Meet him in the fireball. I like that. Now I see my man down back for the down back. As soon as I say that, down forward heavy punch does clip him low, though. That is, I guess, at that distance a problem. But Mochi unfazed. It's gonna be the play from Ryusei, right? He's looking to close the gap against against Momochi and looking for a reaction out of him too, throwing out some of these faint phantoms. Oh no! Stand heavy punch. Oh, yeah. oh! Who's that? Don't even drop it against this character. Well, all that bar taking that drive impact. Now you're in burnout. Don't you have us? It's a good real bad for you, but he's got those modern reactions. Again, modern problems require modern solutions. As you put it before, you've got that super, you've got these modern reactions that cut down the response time, can easily counter things like drive rush or even buttons as a whiff. Yeah, not worried about the drive rush at all. Emochi is playing solid defense too, letting some of the fireballs uh ring out against Ryusei, but here we go, yeah. We now get that drive rush forward into the low medium kick. Again, we talked about one of the combo starters, one of the big openers. Level two, the overhead at the last second. Momochi wasn't ready for the goon squad. Set of departure from above. That's a great block, but look at how much chip damage he just took. Ryusei is totally fine with that. Ah, the bait on the throw. Hella damage, Jesus. You say, not even going for the drive impact right there. Just able to open him up with that stamp fierce walk back. Fantastic button. On block, it's great because it kills the drive gauge. And on hit, it does so much damage, leads into so much. This corner carry right here. And look at that. Locking down with the departure. Now hitting the level two after the target combo. Drive reversal, waited and baited. Ah, oh, this is bad. Up in the corner. Pierce, only departure. Punish counter. Oh my god, dude. Will you say is actually playing like a nut right now in terms of his, his the variety of different approaches he has on offense too and also turning it off and playing pure defense that was actually pretty cool baiting out the drive reversal is what spelled out doom for momochi man first game going to reusing the eyes of desperation but it looks like momochi's been the one who's desperate thus far Ugh, i like that drive impact in the string call him out damn fierce drive rush in Checks and Chelsea that four framer that stand medium too as well. Okay, reactions again on deck with the OD, but you are in burnout and this could be bad. Depending on what happens. Down for heavy punch, catching the walk back. He's getting close enough where that low problematic thing is occurring and then setting up for the departure continuously. The super, yeah, gets the space with this place. Back him up a bit with the make him up. Level one. No you shot. Actually you're actually sneaky. That was really, really well done. Because of how many times he's thrown out the feints, it, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense, too. You'd have to react to the stance of JP to make sure you avoid them. But who's really looking, man? It's so tough to call. Level two, the goon squad. 
Reversal? Sorry, dry reversal. Hello, game. <laughs> she got her five. Is that you? <laughs> Got three walking these jabs, not getting too much off of it though. That stamp here. Running in the corner. Nice. They'll get that level one. As a bunch to get some distance and hopefully build up this drive gauge back. No, what a drop. Confirm. Oh, you dirty son of a gun. That's more than enough for you say. Man, nobody on FAV Gaming has dropped a game yet. Ryusei is looking at match point already. Or almost oh, match point, his me. Is, I mean, yeah. it's, it's almost there. Considering how dominant he is. And I, I like that he's getting close up for that down for a heavy punch to connect and try to get those knockdown situations. Like threatening that low approach. And then also, as we put out before, maybe that driver verse has been continuous maybe not the last time that it has occurred but i like that he is like at least aware of the defensive options and then how he structures his normals crouch light kick every so often and then crouching medium punch when maybe momochi wants to walk up and take his turn back with crouching medium punch of his own just for you sake faster on the draw to make a fall and just so dominant and i feel like momochi has burnt himself off out more than i've seen him do consistently and sometimes you have to do it i feel like to get some dis od or whatever it may be to drive rush to start the party off but i feel like he's burnt himself out more than usual i mean is this a modern thing i'm not sure or is he maybe not comfortable fully with modern yet to establish things with i'm not i i, I, I don't know why but it's i feel like that's a part of the problem it's his decision making to to have JP back off of him, right? There's been so many decisions where he's done uh, drive reversals. There's so many decisions where he's done like OD uppercut as well. We're going to see that stat. I think he's gone for OD uppercut a good amount of times in this matchup specifically, but I think majority of his problems have been from his choices as to when he does ODs. I think uh, it, more often than not, it's put him in trouble than it has like landed him the success. Because once he lands these OD uppercuts, he's he becomes pretty aggressive. Like he wants to like move in. And that's where Ryusa is like, oh, I could counter poke you here. And then once I get my turn after the counter poke, then I'm gonna have you burnt out because I'm gonna put you in a block string. I think also like the meter management from Ryuse has been really, really on point. Him having level two mm -hmm. in those exact scenarios that we were talking about where Momochi is close to burnout, he activates and then forces the danger. So we'll see if there's gonna be a switch up. Man, already aggressive with the drive impact or the drive rush. But it's Ryuse who's now being the aggressor. Is that OD bust out? Mm -hmm. Some distance with it, but again, Ryuse driving on in. I think also it's killing that drive case, that stand fierce on block it. Kills a lot of gauge, so these target combos. He's aiming to kill the gauge right here with this sequence. Backed up, found a punish, kind of knocked down, sent heavy kick. Goes to the low to open him up. Oh, this is looking bad. Needy's dead heavy kick again to get the win. In the corner, call corner, because Ryusei is digging the grave right now of Emochi and his team. Set point for him. You know, Bonchan had talked about it. He wants to put less pressure on the anchor spot. And I love that chase down too. I don't know what these neutral jumps are from Momochi. It's not the first time he's been clipped like that. Here we go, the goon squad do a little bit more damage to the drive gauge. Yeah, we want that burnout. Look at the strength. The damage there is also tremendous. And the lockdown as well. But you say, yeah, this is going to look so tough for Momochi as well. Don't get thrown. Ooh. Can't get a little bit of damage with that beast mode. Some distance with it, and now bars back. But you gotta stay solid for you, say. Still dominant in burnout, but definitely not out of options. Has a corner position that Stan fears. Doesn't commit. Oh, did commit to that throw, though. Gonna get opened up. A combo into Fireball, Stan heavy kick right after. Okay, Momochi. DP right after. Backs up. OTP. Ryusei's defense. Time. Oh, that's it. Oh. It's it. That's more than enough. Ryusei sneaking in another command grab to take down the leader of Shinobiism. Wasn't ready. That is a full sweep. Not even just the matches, but in games. 100% win rate from FAV Gaming against Shinobiism. That is actually od in and of itself 40 point ball game hey 40 we miss you buddy where you been at mm -hmm.
been a while. Been some time. Hope you're fine. But man, you say more than fine on his offense, on his defense, up in the corner, not getting open up, not getting cooked. And honestly, sneaking these command grabs, maybe you're just kind of just railing into them with your offense. You're trying to get something going, and you're not even thinking about that 20 something plus, you know, command grab coming out that normally you'd be able to catch you'd normally be able to jump out but there's so many things going on so much mental stack that you just get gripped up and slipped up and Ryusei man he is just so dominant also you know what another thing that I feel like he did really well is every time he got a knockdown we saw OD departure out and about to kind of lock down the neutral and make it really hard for uh, Momochi kind of just drive rush through. I feel like you, you can't, it's hard just kind of drive rush through with mediums like you'd like to, getting stuffed and stopped because the departure is out. And FAV Gaming getting just a very dominant victory 40 in return of being down the 10 to 30 when they fought Shinobi's in gaming previously. Congrats. Man, that's gotta feel good for Ryusei. No doubt. And also as a big halt to Shinobiism and their progression, right? Uh, despite it being only week number two, they were the number one leaders. Of, they were the number one on the leaderboard with 30 points, right, in the previous week. So this right. is gonna be a huge, huge difference with Shinobiism in the second week only, sorry, gathering absolutely zero points. Well, he's gonna allow the rest of the teams to catch up potentially, but even so, it wasn't even that far of a catch-up. So that's going to be interesting. Yeah, FAV Gaming now skyrockets to what? First place with 60 points in their name because they scored 20 last week. So that is... Whew, that is a big redemption arc for FAV Gaming. Not only being in first place now, but also taking the big W against Shinobiism. I'm liking this. They got them. They got the. Uh, they got plot armor now. <laughs> the protagonist is that what's going on? Mm -hmm. Sako saying uh, we were expecting to uh, expecting all the players who came out today. You see it in the strategy. It feels like too as well. Tokido saying you know I lost last week, so I wanted to make revenge today. He definitely mm -hmm. laughed out and prepared for that mirror match, bro. Definitely looking awake and aware of. I feel like you know not getting blessed with those crouching to kick lows continuously. Perfect pair with the fireballs. Maybe that was the strategy that now I'm implemented last time and he was like i'm gonna stand my ground stand on business with these perfect pairs against the fireballs and stay close and compact and comfortable and budge and this dude was super sick the way that he has yeah. been playing with this luke is out of this world to be outside the ranges of the drive rush normals the side of dj that is not an easy thing when people are continuously adjusting where they're standing the drive rush you don't know what's gonna be landing all the time he just and as you pointed out, putting in the neutral jump when need be or just adjusting back to find whip punishes against these buttons, fantastic. Yeah, I think he was just playing better. There was just something about Yamaguchi that was really predictable, and Banchan actually got to mention that, too. He said, uh, I was able to make the winning pattern against DJ easy win for today. So I think that just says a lot about how much Banchan had prepared for DJ specifically. <laughs> No matter who it was going to be. And I, I genuinely think that this is not something against Yamaguchi. I think it just so happened to be Banchan playing as the better person today. Um, but with that in mind, I think, you know, Banchan's technique of practicing for DJ in, in certain instances, you really saw it, right? You saw some really, really clean defense of defensive decision making against how aggressive DJs can be to shut him down too. And you saw how meticulous he was on offense to force some of the player habits against Yamaguchi as well. So I think he was like the, uh, he was a combination of the perfect storm, I feel like, specifically against Yamaguchi. Remember you say, said, I was really nervous during the game, but many of my moves were out because I was freaking out. That's strange because we did see some drops. So I, I, I guess it makes sense. But a lot of the sequencing seemed really on point. And Momochi just hot off a fifth place, uh, you know, placement over at the World Warrior fourth edition for Japan. Taking down a champion like that dog is, I mean, it's got to be frightening to do. But Ryusei staying compact, solid, and eyes always open. Sako ending out the interview by saying next up is cyclops we have singapore also coming up too as a lot of players are oh, flying yeah. out there to qualify bro that's gonna be a <laughs> demonic pool no matter where you are at as many players from all across the globe are flying out to get that one only one cpt spot out there that is a dangerous dangerous uh tournament so he said we'll get ready for the next games i'm assuming out there that'll be great practice but also when they fly back they'll be ready too as well mm. I had almost forgot that they had talked about that in the last week's 
uh, Street Fighter League in terms of the scheduling as well, uh, showing that Friday was going to be their off day because everybody's traveling to the offline premiere. I'm kind of wondering if they're going to do the same if they travel to the French premiere coming up in November, but we'll find out sooner rather than later, I feel like. But going into it, Shinobi is in gaming. We talked about the boss outs, right? We talked about specifically OD reversal. What does that say right there? Four out of four, right? How often do you see that? I don't know, like, if, if that's something that's what... That, that caused the downfall from Momochi or not, but that's proof in the pudding, right? That we were talking about how often he went for those OD reversals. Um, every other stat, we talk about the tech throws, 0 out of 5. It, it's hard to try to tech the throw sometimes, but when it comes to double departure, it's it's a little problematic, right? When double departure is out or any sort of departure is out and they get you in a throw sequence, it could be your downfall a lot sooner than you think, but... Hey, good on, uh, good on Ryusei to bring in that wheel of options for his offense and keep it ambiguous because, man, you really couldn't tell if it was going to be a meaty, if it was going to be a throw. We, I think there was a moment where you called out um, Momochi getting clipped by the roundhouse, the meaty roundhouse as well. You saw a counter hit on the side of that too. So it was tough. I think Momochi couldn't really find the right answers to Ryusei's offense. <laughs> the attack on drive cage continuously. I mean, I feel like that's kind of been the game plan for FFV gaming throughout this entire thing. And many pro players, but definitely trying to kill that drive cage as much as possible. And also the anti were fantastic. Drive rush, crouch, fears also found its way continuously to lead Momochi to the corner and lead Momochi out. Out. As for you say, Forest team ended it. 40 points, 40 bar for FAV Gaming again. It is so hard to call who is going to take these matches, what team is going to take the victory over the other. It's such close contention, and it just depends on who is grinding harder, who is stronger on the day, and it's just making all these matches super exciting. I, I like the fact that, yeah, we don't have good eight squad who's out here as dominant as they used to be. They're not out here because other teams have stepped up, rise up to the occasion, and we're not even done with the matches. We still have way more to go, and things could be shifted and moved around. But as the rankings stand, as you mentioned, Shinobi's in gaming. Down, FAV Gaming is up. The stocks are up, and they're at the top spot in first place right now. Man, it's already break time. I didn't even realize it. I'm like, I thought we were going for the next match, but this is this, this is what has to be, man. They got to tease us with some of the the, the real really cool uh, bits and pieces that uh, come with the game, right? I feel like these little. Oh, and of course we switch up into the, into the post. Hey, by the way, if you guys hadn't noticed, there's actually a little drop link down below of the broadcast towards the Amazon gift shop and guess what it's actually for, um, available for every region they just included this for both America and uh, EU for Street Fighter League so you can order these exact shirts and hoodies right now if you guys check out the link down below you could still pick out your size and also pick out your region and get it delivered to you um i'm not too sure what it's going to be like in terms of the shipping but the fact that it is currently available color me happy they made this shirt available for u.s customers for the u.s the u.s player base I'm actually super down. We wanted this. We absolutely wanted this with exclusive artwork currently available down below. Mm -hmm. Again, be sure to check it out. Make sure y'all pick it up ASAP as we have worked so hard to ask Capcom to give you the shirts that they're wearing right now that one day I'll be wearing real soon as well because I've just ordered a couple. So uh, hopefully they get here sooner rather than later. But uh, y'all can order yours ASAP to support Street Fighter League Japan. It's already been a fantastic one. And, and the fact that you know we have ways to support and kind of promote this uh is great i like having merch that like looks good uh, you said that you yours was uh well fitting and uh, feels good too as well yes. the one that you got Ooh, it's really really important to be able to rock that out too because we're such fans of the game we're such fans of the ip and just such fans of the community around it too so again be sure to pick it up and you guys have to pick up on all the action too using hashtag street fighter 6 if you guys haven't done so already and also follow along Capcom underscore esports for everything in the latest and greatest of both the Street Fighter League and the Ca and Capcom Cup as well. But as it is right now, you are tuning in to the second week. Coming up after this break, we'll have Sai Shunkan Soul Kumamoto facing off against Cyclops Athlete Gaming Osaka. You do not want to miss the action. You do not want to miss what happens. And I guarantee you, it's going to be a banger. We'll see you on the other side of this break. ですね。えー、なのでまあ今日の試合でまあ
ぜひ他の人に共有したいと思った瞬間があれば、えー、こちらクリップを共有使っていただいて、えー、60秒以内のハイライトとして共有することができます共有の方法は SNS やメールブログなどでハイライト部分の URL を共有する形となります今回この、えー、クリップ機能に関しましては違法アップロードではなく、えー、問題ありませんので皆様が思う名場面を広めていただければと思いますよろしくお願いしますさあこの後はシェイ準備のため休憩に入らせていただきます。再開時間20時40、えー、失礼しました。20時4分から、えー、20時4分から第二節マッチツ最終関する熊本対サイクロプスアスリートゲーミング大阪の模様をお届けしてまいります。それでは一旦失礼いたします マジで俺ね逆なんだよねえガードするなガードめっちゃ悪っていうえっそういうあこういう飛びね普通の飛びに真面からの飛びにガードして、はい、あけどこれは不利不利だから立川さんどうしましょうって今<笑>俺,俺,俺の認識こうなのどうするの前にあるだろうっていうねもう食らった方がよくね<笑>俺は思っちゃうそうやってねまあ、けどまああの質問答えてくださいちょっと対空を出せ対空出せじゃないのよあ違うんですかガードしてるのをよしとするな<笑><笑>
up in the game, you're up here and prove A real problem, but I solve them all facts proof And if you think I'm gonna fold, then you told me The sun shines upon us again as we get ready to see who faces against the Cyclops again. It's Saishun Console Kumamoto stepping up to the plate, but on the away side. We'll see who will take on the One-Eyed Beast. Let's take a look. We had a little bit of a switch up coming into it with our brand new player for the team. But no stranger to danger. It's the Daredevil on ice. It's Kabe coming in with that can. And the ever important piece to the puzzle that is the prodigy named Higuchi with that guile coming in, backed by the little devil, one who always likes to win by any means necessary, it's Shuto with that Marisa, taught by the brute king himself, the man with many enemies. It is Nemo coming in with that JP, and this is the composition you could expect from the team favored by the sun. It's Saishunkan, Soul, Kumamoto. They'll be going up against Cyclops Athlete Gaming Osaka. You see Nemo already taking a sip of water, getting ready to fight against the One-Eyed Beast. The new kids on the block, the masters of mini games, I should say. 
Cyclops, Athlete Game Osaka. Love back by fighting games and the man that loves all fighting games it is Kazu Loco on that scammy cammy right after is going to be the man that made the pack with the right sort of devil with the wind devil. That is the Dogra. Shout out to my boy Finny for that one. The DJ. Theoretical value. I don't know what that means, but I do know that Finn Rich is always with it and he's always amazing on that JP. And last but not least is Goichi, the extraordinaire, but extraordinarily soaring to the World Warrior tournaments with his Chun Li. Can he soar out here in Street Fighter League for his team? And again, these cats are new additions to the league, besides, of course, Dogra, who has been kind of giving a little bit of information to his team. And of course, the glasses are on again. And Dogra, what, what, what is this? Execution. Dude, Fenrich, is Fenrich has actually lost when it comes to like the player, uh, the player intro poses, like all three. So it's Goichi, Kazunoko, and Dogra that have been on so many team battles before in other games. Uh, so I kind of feel for Fenris. Fenris just sitting there. He's like, wait, I, I didn't get the memo. I don't know. Like, but for the rest of the teammates, it just comes naturally. It just comes naturally. It's so funny. Um, hopefully I can find that YouTube video of the other three. But anyways, going into it. Order of business, Sai Shunkan, Soul Kumamoto. What's the order? Nemo going first as the Vanguard, right? He's in the Shogun match with the JP. Higuchi with the middle match with Guile and Shuto in the general spot. He is the anchor with Marisa. Classic Marisa, specifically going with Classic first. He's locking that in. Very interesting. Huh. Hmm. I've seen him train with Classic on a stream. Maybe he's trying to keep up both forms uh, to be on forum as possible. And there are, you know, some good things you have with the driver scratching light kick. You have a low opener, so we'll see what that uh, what that purpose may be and what matchup. But going up, I would like to see Kazunoko go up against a JP. Well, there we go. We got our question answered immediately. It's going to be Kazunoko going up against that JP. I'm sure after the loss that he suffered against, uh, or I should say that Nemo emboldened by taking down Mago in his cami. I'd like to see what happens when Kazunoko steps to the plate because I did see a recent video on FGC Translated where Nemo was just elated that he deleted Mago's cami off the table. Now you have to deal with the likes of a man of many games that is Kazunoko. Yeah, I think this is really smart, too, because Kazunoko is one to really do damage when it comes to his due diligence. I think he does a fantastic job of doing the research against players and breaking down some of their strengths and weaknesses. Knowing that he has the information from Nemo from the previous battles that we saw earlier against Kami's, I think this makes it just makes the most sense for him to do it. So looking into the matches overall, you know, Kazunoko may not have the best win record, but it's also what, like 50 percent. We'll talk about that a little further on. I think overall. Overall, his cami has been pretty solid, but going up against any other cami, I think he'll be fine with that. Mm. See, Nemo says, I played with cami versus cami last time, practice for it, or had to do cami versus cami last time in terms of, I guess, play cami after cami, and he's practiced for this. I mean, this is a matchup I feel like a lot of JP players have practiced against. You have to deal with the character that has these weird anglings in terms of jump-ins, the dive kicks, and someone like Kazunoko is going to present that more often than not. Looking at uh, Nemo stats, he has had four out of eight in the first stage, and in the second stage, one out of two already. So we'll see what occurs now. It was last time that he did fight Mago. He won, but that anchor match, I'm sorry, he won the anchor match, but got defeated in the first to one against Moke, who got his revenge. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, but looking into it, yeah, Nemo looking pretty confident about his uh, his win against the Kami player. So hopefully Nemo maybe won't have to provide too much of a different look, I would say, against Kazunoko. Man, it took me a while to get through that sentence. But I'll tell you what now. We talked about Kazunoko's uh, current record, right? 50 points on the board for him. Uh, no stranger to danger. He's been a Capcom Cup champion, right? One of the first to set it off into the new game, right? with Street Fighter 4 uh, towards the final year. But I think, you know, this. there's a lot of a lot to go with uh, the stuff he said with the pregame interview, right? I think there's a lot to talk about there. I practiced with Fenrich for the same character. For that kind of statement to be made, I feel like, you know, Kazunoko, on top of doing the research, him being up first 
You could bet he'll be confident. But let's talk about the players specifically. I feel like Kazunoko is one that's like slower to start. I think um, he's always been the one that kind of you would see in like an anger spot where he would like let the game number one be the informative round for him, or the informative game for him. I feel like Nemo being the type of player that he is with the background that he has, especially in versus games, I think he'll mix it up so well that it won't give Kazunoko the proper time to make those adjustments. So, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I think uh, if I had to really bet on it, I think Nemo might give really different lo looks in comparison to how he played against, um, who was it, Mago? Right? So, yes, Mago. we'll yeah. see. I mean, that's what uh, Kazunoko is uh, hoping doesn't occur. He's like, I'm hoping Nemo isn't moving different because that data could be outdated see what happens in this match. Nemo versus Kazunoko. First match between Sashi Kanso, Kumoto, and Cyclops Athlete Gaming Osaka. There's that dive kick. I'd like him to start the party off with a little bit more aggression as you put it. You know, Kazunoko, a little bit slower of a starter. Ooh. In the corner, though. Parcher locking down the neutral. Oh. Kazunoko biding his time. Not falling for the feints. We love to see that crouching medium punch connect into something big also. Nemo being able to reset the situation. Set up a departure, set up a spike, set up a phantom as well. Kazunoko actually threading the needle, getting a couple of jumps in, and now he gets the party started. This is the move that we were actually worried about against Nemo, but Nemo fights to survive out of the corner. But it's Kazunoko rushing right back in. Level two mid air. Make it connect. Save jump. I kick deep with it to make it plus. Then medium kick, trying to poke away. But Nemo striking back and trying to kill that drive. Gets stand stamp fierce. Now act activates level two. Gets a grip. Punish counter. Almost it. He goes for the OD. And he goes to the low right after. He would have been a bro. That would have been bad. But Nemo betting it all. And also, I also like these fake outs with these ghosts every so often. It's making hard. Kasunoko to kind of like spin knuckle in like you'd like to predictively. Yeah. I, I find spin knuckle to be a really difficult move to utilize specifically in this matchup. Despite the purpose it serves, I think the projectiles are just too fast. Mm. Set up the departure, sit him back down. I love the jump option. It wasn't meeting enough to keep Kazunoko grounded, which is a great look, but Nemo going for the regular, sorry, OD amnesia. Air throw, that's fine. Drive rush on forward. Let the goons rock. Nice. Opens him up, finds the overhead. Yeah, you're dead. Stan Fierce for the follow-up. Corner pressure too nasty. And Kazunoko not able to get too much success when he gets in. As now we see the OD amnesia being activated. And it may force him to back up a bit and have to rethink things on the media situation. These fake outs for the ghosts are also problematic, as well as the departure kind of guide Kazunoko around the screen. Yeah, and you can see Nemo purposefully using the drive rush to bait out Kazunoko too, halting the momentum immediately afterwards. But the, I think the, one of the biggest deterrences obviously are the departures. Now Kazunoko being a little bit friskier on the approach, jumping on in there despite the departure being active. OD Amnesia, punish counter against the throw. Uh, look at the damage. Set a departure in front of him. He gets a dash up one, but two, he does so much damage on the drive gauge despite all that, right? Kazunoko is still trying to thread the needle right. and figure out what these openings are going to be like. Oh, what a whiff punish. How many times have we seen crouching medium kick and then crouching medium punch right after it? Finally, spin knuckle coming into play. Bad it. Try to get that side switch for the OD MDG is out and about to save the day. Still gets the OD DP for the side switch, but this is bad. You're in burnout. This is the bear to burnout in level two. Holding a lot of chip with it. Still gets clipped. Doesn't get the follow up to not. Get the medium one. Oh, no gaps, bro. That was the, the most Kazunoko thing you could ask for. That was actually the most Kazunoko thing. Yo, wake up. No, not wake up. Sorry. Reversal level two. I don't even think that has invincibility. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it doesn't, but I might be wrong. I might be tripping, but last I checked, it didn't. Kazunoko playing like it does and having that reversal as a rebuttal. Nice, calls out the throw right there, switching up that option up when he gets close enough for these lights and throws. Looks like TK dive kick. 
has to do with that departure. This is the problematic thing right here. OD and normal departure has been locking Kazuna Knuckle down and stopping him from running his offense. And once he gets close, it gets personal. Wait, bait? Yeah, time to decimate. I like that. Go for the parry to save your drive gauge and get juiced up for even more advantage. But it doesn't matter. The mash out, the light. Kazunoko getting back thrown to the corner. Do get the forward throw, set up double departure. Yes, sir. The sides. Oh, okay. The teleportation is going to be the big opener now. Kazunoko in big trouble, if not dead. Oh, he's definitely dead. My mistake. Yo, Nemo looking to clean up one more round. Looking at match point against Kazunoko. Teleports are super nasty. But we do see the crushing light kick opener here from Kazunoko. And again, the teleport situation. Letting Nemo escape or just lock down for pressure. OD gets a side switch. Fantastic reversal to be able to put the other person in the corner. Ooh, Sweet now counter. against that button. Okay. And I love the departure right in front, too, to kind of uh, push himself out of the corner. And Nemo, I was going to say, making all the right decisions up until that point. The standing like it was the big deterrent. Kazunoko checking the approach from Nemo very wisely, too, with a light. Fast, compact, had meter behind it just in case. Really, really smart. Yeah, instead of using other buttons that we've seen, like, say, a medium kick and say, a heavy kick, it was something a little bit more compact than the, was able to save the day, but... These departures, though, are still going to be problematic in this final game. He's got to find a way to play around those options. And it's hard because every knockdown, it feels like Nemo is either going to be spinning for, for OD or running it raw, going with departure. And that OD amnesia stopping these meaties and any sort of approach. Defense down to offense. Oh. Man, that just stuffed out the dive kick, the crouching medium punch from Nemo and that JP. Barrage with a couple of lights, still trying to counter poke against them. Drive rush forward, nothing of it, but it still gets the forward throw departure. No, it's going to be the spike. Kazunoko must have thought the same thing. He thought he was trying to dash up forward, but it was the fake out from Nemo. Watch out for the departure. What a time to throw. And I love that from Kazunoko keeping himself safe, but it's not going to lead to much just yet. My tie right there. Very sharp of an angle, activates a level two. The minute Kazunoko's on the back foot, that's when Nemo just rushes in. One more to get the win. OD strikes back and just like that, again, departure, locking down Kazunoko. Keeping him from being mobile at all. What an anti-air, extremely unconventional. Dang, that spiral arrow actually caught Nemo on the way down. Surprisingly enough, Nemo, I don't know if he threw out a normal or not. Side switch and the cross up at that. Sharp angle dive kick level two incoming. We're gonna get the extension. Drive forward, yes sir. No, no drive forward. That was raw. Nice cross oh. fierce anti right there. Get the Pierce. What a Stan Pierce and what a situation here for Nemo. He's got that level two. Oh, also built that level three. Oh, are you kidding me? He said, I got a way to play against that departure. Oh, the spiral arrow to get in. Final game, final round. What a call. He saved that for the last round, too. Or the second to last round. He saved that for the final game. We're slowly starting to see that adaptation from Kazunoko. There it is. We get the spin knuckle against the departure timing. And now we're getting the cannon spikes at the right spacing. The level two coming on in there. The damage is extra. He's waiting for something. He's knocking on the door. Nemo, close to death. That's another throw. He can't take any more of this. Nice, perfect parry. Something different in terms of defense. Instead of just going for an easier, it's blocking it out. Now finds a side switch drive impact. Of course, they get that pickup off the departure. Stan Fierce, Fierce again. OD's out and about. OD, what a bust out. Kazunoko betting it all. He wouldn't have died for it, but still. Careful your drive gate, you saw need one more hit to get the kill. Will it be spiral arrow again, or just the OD spin knuckle to get in? Too much pressure on that approach. Kazunoko showing something that's different. So this is the, that's so good. Also, plus, and it's a way to play we haven't seen in a while. Here are the other options that have been entry points. Kazunoko taking it over Nemo.
He, he started to use the different looks at the very, very end, too. We were talking about that earlier, right? We allow, we, we, we talk about Kazunoko allowing the first game to be the informative game, right? As soon as he got the second one, he's like, all right, I, I'm starting to see some of the timing on some of these departures. I'm starting to understand when Nemo wants to utilize it. Instead of trying to go in with the throw, I'm going to try to use something else that's invincible to projectiles, to steal, my, to, to kind of steal bases a little bit. I thought that was pretty genius. Right, Kazunoko first off showing off the OD cannon drill or the yeah, sorry, the spiral arrow with cannon drills for alpha. Sorry, don't worry about that. But, anyways, Kazunoko going for the OD spiral arrow, genius. Number one, number two, going for the spin knuckle against the departure, also mad genius. That is the definition of adaptation, right there. That was a master class in adaptation from Kazunoko. To the bus outs on the side of Kazunoko, two for two, hundred percent. Also, also helped lead to his victory. Then have those anti-tires. You see, that's one on a nine, but it's hard to stay fine against the departure when you see these teleports. You know, jump light kicks and side switches, things like that with the mix. A lot less anti-tires on the side of this, you know, from Nemo, but it's hard to anti when it comes against Cami. When it comes to text, you know, we did see at least a couple of texts from both sides of things, but you want to hold these throws against these characters. But I do want to note the defense up in the corner from Kazunoko, checking challenging, and also in wake up. He's always providing different looks. We saw that wake up super. Maybe it wasn't like, you know, invincible like you'd like to have, like other reversals, but it still worked out in a clutch where Nemo was not expecting it. these different looks that Kazunoko was hoping that Nemo didn't provide. It was the reverse. It was Kazunoko providing different looks all the time. And that is Cyclops Athlete Gaming leading the charge right now. 10 points so far. Yeah, really, really smart. Going into the next matchup, Iguchi, you got to send up, you got to send up Fenris for this one, right? You got to send up Guile versus uh, a JP. It just makes sense, I feel like. If uh, Higuchi being your middleman, you'd want to give him the toughest spot possible, even if it's not for, like, the maximum amount of points that you could ask for. But uh, my, my money has to be on Fenris coming up next. Oh, I agree. I think JP is the best position uh, that you have here. One of the rare characters that does elite Gal. And you see a lot of Gal players like uh, Knuckle do frustrated, but it is going to be Goichi instead. That is so strange. I feel like Finridge would have been fantastic in that match, though. JP or otherwise. Surprised me. Thoroughly surprises me. I'm kind of curious. Taking a look at Goichi's overall performance, right? You're taking a look at how he played off. Hi. I don't know if Aguchi was ready. Sorry, that was funny. Um, yeah, three out of eight wins. Not a lot of points earned from the side of Goichi. It took him a little bit of a, a warm-up to kind of get some of his big Ws, right? And he didn't get a big W until he fought off against Moke. Then again, even later on in the season, where he beat Ryusei and Nauman. But in terms of the JPs he had to face off against, he's lost against Nemo. He's lost against Ryusei for the first time, technically. So maybe that win against Ryusei was a big eye opener. No glasses, uh, no pun intended. But um, I think, uh, yeah, maybe maybe he's he's starting to see something develop in the matchup for him, and he wants to test out his theory. I just, I, I, it's so strange, but sometimes it's like player to player or, you know, what the other player can provide in terms of their matchup, uh, in terms of their, you know, understanding the matchup too as well. Again, Goichi getting second in World Warrior, maybe he's hopped up on that sort of energy, so we'll have to see what he provides. Haguchi says that Nemo did well in trying to make him proud, and that's a hard person to make proud. That's a really difficult yeah. person to make happy. <laughs> so good luck to you. If you win, it's going to be like you could have did this better. Why'd you flash kick there? I won, but still, you didn't win the right way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were supposed to throw him. You were supposed to put his face in the dirt. But, but, but Nemo, we, we, we won the championships. Could have been better. It could have been better. All right. <laughs> but yeah, I think um, if, if there's anybody who's really commanding the positions here and the points, it's easily Higuchi, right? In comparison to the rest of his comrades, I think, you know, he's been the big point earner for Saishu and Konsol Kumamoto. Not just in this season, but in the previous one, right? Higuchi has been one of the most dominant Guile players that have come from the new era that we could ever ask for. And I think overall, he just might be the most dominant Guile player we might ask for further into the lifespan of Street Fighter VI, the way that he's been playing but as it stands right now there aren't any other looks that he can ask or any other looks that he can receive um when it comes to the chun li matchup i think goichi 
might just be the one outside of Sakonoko to deliver those type of matchups. But in the current record that Higuchi has played off in, he has not really played against either before, right? The last time they encountered Cyclops, he beat down Kazunoko. But in terms of the Chun matchup, I'm not sure how well versed he is. I'm really curious to see uh, like how well he can take down the iron wall that is Goichi. I mean, this man's been known for defense throughout every single game. And I'm curious to see what the defense is like for Sada Goichi. Is it going to be like walk up, block, and perfect pair, anything like that? Holding on that gauge as much as possible. Hazanshu as well. I'm happy, worried about upside down kick. The crush shot, you kick, but the jump in is a okay. If you're jumping in on the likes of a Gucci and a Gao player, you're starting off right. You know, I actually misspoke severely last week. Higuchi fell short to Moke's Chun for 10 points. It happened last week. Oh. <laughs> so maybe there's something here. Maybe there's data here that Koichi's going to utilize. We'll see. That's difficult. That means also gucci has been labbing out that matchup. I've called on the streams looking at that Chun Li versus Guile. Trying to figure out ways to play. Right now he's in the corner. Got to find a way out. Upside down kick again to low press that crouching medium kick. Finds a sick press that super and trying to kill the drive gauge. Oh, oh yeah, punish counter. Deader than dead. A real big wait and bait there, too. Knowing full well what was coming. I'm liking that, that big rebuttal from Higuchi, but from that range also. Goichi is not going to be able to jump over some of these sonic booms. It just gives Gala enough space to recover and get a medium kick. But look at this. Uh, uh, Fierce is for the corner carry. Back throw. Uh. Almost fell on that sonic boom. Still stay solid, though. And backing off to get, get some gauge back in business. And he been, he burns so much. He has to be very careful. You not want to be in burnout against the likes of Gala, especially with that level two. Flashing. Chip you out. Oh, oh, he saw it coming. Super against the bazooka knee. Yeah. So ready with it. Gonna get that quarter cup that level two. More importantly. Oh. Oh my god. Does he have enough meter? Uh, uh, is he gonna spend level one? No, he's gonna go for a safe jump. Empty jump, actually, into the tick throw. So slick. And another tick throw. Goichi is on fire when it comes to corner pressure. Defense too as well. That bazooka the entry point getting shut down with the super and getting the most out of that corner carry and again the reactions. This time we drive rush through against a sonic boom. Gets the pickup with that level two. Back in the corner. Back to square one. She has not been able to find a way out. He does activate the stand heavy kick. The level two. Goichi back off that plus frame situation. Finds the anti right there. OD to try to get some pressure and approach, but. Gucci has a lot more water work with here. Oh. Hey, we talk about we talk about how important having a level one super is for yourself towards like these these moments in the matchup. Gucci being still able to yeah land a level two level one sorry and still have another level one for defense just in case. We'll see if Goichi Overhead not punished. can make the most of his super art also. Mm. Could have been a lot more of that stand like it. Could have probably clipped that overhead. But still, he does have that bar at the bottom. One good reaction, but he's not reacting against the overhead. The switch up off a of drive rush is allowing Higuchi to stay solid. I like these overheads every so often. And even that upside down kick after it low crush, that crouching medium kick make Goichi really rethink how he can like walk forward and approach. Yeah, you have these light punches, medium punches, and swift thrust command normal, but you don't have that walk forward crouching mid kick with that great walk speed to dominate even more so of that forward space. So it's even more dangerous to throw that button out. And Higuchi taking advantage of that hesitation took the first victory. Yeah, a little bit of reluctancy too. To be fair, Goichi, he was looking for the fireballs towards the end of that segment, towards the end of that first match first game um but higuchi wasn't even giving him that look he actually kept breaking his charge purposefully to kind of like 
egg Goichi on. I don't know if he saw, but he was walking back and forth a bunch of times over. It wasn't until like the end of it where he's like, all right, Goichi, you're not going to move. I'm going to throw out these sonic booms. The moment he started charging for booms, Goichi started to move forward and ran into him. I'm like, oh, that's that's just unfortunate timing. But that's also really good game sense from the side of Higuchi, knowing full well to kind of be on like reactive mode instead of just relying on the booms to finish it out. So that's really smart for him to, to kind of go back and forth between like when it's time for kill mode, when it's time to react and stuff, and when it's time to like hang back and let the booms do the work. Yeah, letting him uh, playing against the reactions is definitely a big, uh, you know, a big thing in any fighting game. And also, I like that you point out like the movement. Like that's a really cool idea. Instead of just using like buttons to kind of fake out, like say a medium punch to fake out booms, he's using movement too as well. It's getting harder and harder for Goichi to read and use that great defense in the offense that we know him for. He's had some good reads with level two, but they're not amounting to the most right now. And right now, Goichi sitting on game point. How would you see corner carry? Double spin, bird kick. Puts him up in the corner with that throw though. Walks up with the jabs too as well. Testing the waters. Nice Tensho kicks too on the way out. Could be a little bit difficult sometimes to get that down down kick i'm not gonna lie to you man i played with chun li just a little bit i found her anti is a little bit inconsistent with that but yeah at least when it comes to checking the corner escapes they're very consistent oh try to hazard you over got clip with the fireball different sort of speeds which give him different sort of looks gets a punish counter flash kick looking to kill that drive gauge too as well we try to go for the air throw but got knocked down to the ground still caught up in the corner is goichi and now he's in burnout. This is bad. Unless you miss your Crouch Fierce anti right there. Got the solid puncher while in burnout. Goichi's in a, in a big... Wait. He can do Serenity Stance. Oh, but he's running into so many of them. Yeah, that's all she wrote. Goichi. Come on, man. A little bit of frustration. You can see it in the player count from the side of Goichi. But the Serenity Stance is the, is the right idea to duck under the booms. Mm -hmm. But he mistimed it twice over and took so much extra damage. Now Gucci sitting on set point. Damn near checkmate scenarios have been on point here from uh, Gucci. OD, no knockdown. Gucci trying to approach. Walking blocks and parries. Every so often gets a side of So again, that movement that you pointed out, like breaking that charge to kind of bait Goichi a little bit, to break up that rhythm. They maybe expect from him to throw out Sonic Booms and Buttons. Yeah, the he's contesting with some of his mid range. Yep. The mid range, po mid range pokes are going to be so so problematic, I feel like, for Goichi. If you're if you're Higuchi, you're fine with this damage, by the way. It's the corner carry you're worried about. Mm -hmm. Here comes the pressure now. Goichi gets the forward throw. Stand jab, just waits. In fear of what, though? The OD flash kick, perhaps? Oh, that gives Higuchi so much space. The momentum all on his side as well. Attack on the drive gauge. Yup, that was actually kind of smart. The fireball into the drive rush to throw off the timing of the parry. Really well done from Higuchi. That's some knuckle do tech. Yeah, really. One more hit. We'll see one good OD Sonic boom. We'll see the deal with Sonic play to switch it up to as well. Parry. Goichi with not a lot of life to give right now. Trying to get in with these jabs, but the low. Crouchy meter kick gets the kill, and Aguchi gets another victory for his team. That upside down kick so nasty, where you just you want to do crouchy meter kick right back at him to establish that pace. The catch these walk backs with an upside down kick, claiming that button continuously. And again, the hesitancy, maybe looking as you pointed out, for that OD bust out up in the corner, forced Aguchi to kind of back up, and he never regained his composure after that. Aguchi taking that victory uh, after that matchup against Moke, I, he had to have been labbing quite a bit to maybe put that movement to kind of break up the rhythm and really break down the idea of it's just buttons and booms. It's more about that movement too as well. Yeah, Goichi looking a little perplexed as to why his strategy didn't work out today, but I think it was that exact reason you had just mentioned. Higuchi already doing the due diligence to make sure he doesn't fall to another Chun-Li player as he fell short last week to Moke's Chun. But Moke's Chun gives him so many different looks, and it is a lot more aggressive, I feel like, in the neutral, where he actually tries to bulldog. He doesn't mind taking some of these sonic booms, whereas Higuchi, sorry, whereas Goichi, 
I feel like he was too reliant on reacting to those coming out in comparison. But I would love to watch those two matchups back to back again to see some of the stark contrasts between the two playstyles. Either way, it's going to be 10 points awarded to Saishun Kansol Kumamoto, which means only one thing. We're not going to get a sudden death battle. However, we are going to get these stats. Aguchi coming in on in there. We have the two for two in terms of the anti-air. No, that's not the anti-air. I'm sorry. The OD reversals. I did want to highlight the times he had utilized uh, OD flash. I think it was really well done. Most of it was in the corner. Having the right call outs in the corner with OD flash kick is so, so pivotal to your momentum, I, I think, you know, especially with the amount of, he's wearing new balances. That's crazy. Sorry. My brain's going everywhere. Um, I think overall those, it's, it's really, it's really well thought out as to when he uses, utilizes these OD flash kicks to create the momentum for himself and the spacing more importantly. Yeah, nice some comfort right there. This is when the anti-airs uh, not always work out, so I would like to see maybe Goichi try to establish that, but it's hard when that movement is also making you rethink of, can I even find those anti-airs? We did see like a whip punish. He whipped the Crouch Fierce, and the Goichi got a slight punish, but just did not amount to much. I guess you put it, no first to death. Unfortunately, it all comes down to this. The anchor match at this point, I guess you send up Finridge at, at this point. I guess you said a favorite. Mm, I like the DJ pick for this one. You do? But it is going to be the JP Fenrich. Okay. I, man, I, I would I would have loved to see Fenrich go up against the middle spot, but if it's if if this order specifically from from Goichi stepping up to the middle spot was because they wanted Fenrich to face off against Marisa, then I'm kind of curious to see how this plays out. Because I, without a doubt, Shuto's face off against so many different JPs, not even just Nemo. But um, I'm sure he faced off against Aqua and had a good amount of matches with him. He plays like first of tens or like he plays a bunch of lobby matches also with a lot of the JP players. Um, I, I know he's had like appointments with uh, Kakeru as well. Uh, I, I watched that mostly from Kakeru's end of the stream too. So I, I wonder, man. I, I honestly dub Kakeru as one of the top three JPs in the world sorry in japan if not the world right so it, it's kind of intimidating to see whether or not fenrich has has the sauce to, to deliver a different plate to shuto yeah i mean kaku's style is just so well rounded in every aspect i feel like if you look at the stats like if they were point stats they'd be maxed out and everything defense offense mix ups and things like that fenrich has got to offer that good look and of course it's going to be a different look to deal with this marisa it's classic i don't know how many times people have fought a really good classic marisa over in japan you have like the likes of melon Soda and stuff like that they're great players but are they at the level of Shuto when he is on Classic, who's been labbing that out and is prepared to, to run Classic, I'm assuming, for whatever would come his way, whether it be Dogra, Finrich. Shuto said, I'm losing the JP players twice a season. If I got the moves down for the against uh, JP, if I lose this, I'm not going to face JP ever again. He is like, bro, if I lose this, it's no more JP for me. I feel like a lot of players feel like that in the first place, but they have to deal with it anyway, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Finrich says, I want to win. I will do my best. Yeah, so taking a look at section number six in the first phase, he actually lost to Fenrich in the anchor spot. Um, I do want to see the exact results for that one. But yeah, he lost to him three to one. Interesting. On top of that, that was the anchor spot. In section 12, the last last week, I think it was you and Jake Ryan, he lost to Ryusei going as the jp that's also very very interesting so a lot of history here i feel like for saishun kan soul kumamoto specifically for shuto when it comes to the jp matchup so whatever he said prior in the pre-game interview it makes a lot of sense he fell short to jp both times three to one huh very very uh very intimidating honestly very daunting so so I should though hasn't done some work though to prepare for this matchup. I know that he played JP for a while, like on the side, just to kind of he said to prepare and have it for Super League Japan, but maybe that won't occur, it won't even need it, might not be necessary. But from that, he has learned how the character operates, how ridiculous the character can be. And that's why we see maybe the classic as a different sort of way to play. Maybe these lows, the crouching medium, well, I'm sorry, crouching light kick to open up Finrich may come into play. But either way, anchor match, it all comes down to this. Big punish counter already for Fenrich. 
The corner positioning, having the departure right above Marisa too could be a little bit of a problem for her to even get her game going. And I love that. Punish counter against the OD Gladius. And it was via drive reversal. I love having that in the arsenal because you get the knockdown. You score the knockdown against Marisa, you get to do whatever you want. She does not have a proper OD reversal. I repeat, she does not have an actual OD reversal. Kept her Outside losing of Super Rose. Yeah. Yep. Not so good for her. Mid range, though, not so bad. But you have to be careful to find these Antares right there. Was not able to get that Crouch Fierce out. Sharp angle. Oh, the departure. Locking this character down. Clipped him from the backside. Ghost Pierce. Departure again. OD. Oh, shoot. Those getting frustrated. They make sense. Gotta get close up to drive rush in. And level two begins. Oh, with the target combo, Shuto finding the target. But this is going to be not too bad. I feel like for Fenrir, the so level three is not going to be there. Yeah, you tried to sneak in the drive impact. I don't think Shuto wanted that either because he kind of reeled back in his seat. That's not something he wanted to do, perhaps. Or was it, right? That's a really hard call out. But Fenrir, either way you spin it, he was ready for whatever outcome you throw at him. Yeah, we see those resets, you know, from uh, Marisa players when they don't think they'll get the kill in the next sequence. So maybe it was, but maybe it wasn't. Either way, as you put it, Fenrich ready and steady with the he is chilling, vibing. Good job against this Marisa. Locking down the approach with the OD departure, but here's the OD Gladius to put him inside the corner. I'm gonna whip push too far out there. There's the air to air right there to drop him down. Magnum Buster. Oh my Waits and baits against the amnesia. You are going to be dealt the damage. Oh, the fall gets an impact though. Still a okay. Damn, I love that combo. That's easily one of the coolest combos you can ask for. That combos into a command grab. Like anything that combos into command grab is pretty, pretty, pretty damn sick. Mm -hmm. Not on the other end though. If you, if you face some reset, it's not fun. Oh no, it's trash. Don't do that. No, I, I definitely disagree <laughs> that it's not the coolest combo at all. If I'm on the receiving end of it, I think it's the worst combo on the planet. Shouldn't exist. <laughs> Back up for those anti even better with that Crouch Veers. I like this from Shoot, though. But Gage to distance, but again, those lows blowing up for Gladys, but he's glad he got this conversion. One more sequence after this to build the level three. Actually, he puts up the level three at yeah, the very end. Well calculated. Shoot, though. What a rebuttal, yo. That is actually the most Marisa round you could ask for. Marisa. Whew. I'm gonna put this old man to bed. Don't you worry about it. I gave him his vitamins. I gave him his Ensure. Don't worry about that. All the nutritional value in that. He's got his protein too. Don't worry, I got him. Kiss on the head before he goes to bed. A little bit Actually, of a push, but No conversion side. here. Oh. oh, here we go. Drive rush in with a crouching medium punch this time. Departure, but you see that toe tap being able to stay in that mid range as much as possible because long range hard. You don't have the driver's distance that you have with other characters. That's why I Ooh. like him walking on in before he drive rushes. Oh, what a call out. You saw Fenrich actually trying to use a drive impact. Trying to respond to the OD Gladius in the wrong way, the worst way possible, actually. Sit him down, Dimakiris. Shuto still had plenty left in the tank. To continue the combo but either way he's looking at a game number two under his belt if he could find success again Ooh, baiting out the od amnesia even fenris forgot hey yo shuto blew this up last time i'm gonna do it again anyway all right i say he'll never play another jp player again if he loses but he definitely has the energy that he wants to win no matter what Stand heavy kick though does open him up the level two the ghastly goes the departure, gonna get that pickup, of course. Yeah, full corner yeah. conversion. This is unfortunate because you don't have that much drive gauge, so it's all depleting. Does get him with a toe tap. Yeah, I think the Quadriga also is really important to have, so that's why he's playing in Classic. He was anticipating the JP matchup, right? Mm. So I think having the Classic Marisa is really, really smart here to advance forward and get rid of the departures from behind Marisa. Oh, no, you can't do that. Fake out with the fake ghost. Can't believe it's not goosebumps. It's the throw though. Push him back. Get that area right there with the jump light kick. OD and burnout. This is so basically built that level two. 
of course it's gonna pop that to stay in and even things out but silver strike back finds a gap that defense you see shoot them pop it up like he's already won not gonna lie that was actually kind of sick not gonna lie that was actually pretty good from shooter to find the interruption into the target combo that right there is that was a jump scare you could definitely say that was goosebumps i'm telling you man that was really really well done man shooter i see you brother the defense the quality the kick that you pointed out cutting through the distance and also like the damage right i feel like the damage not being a scale definitely helps out overall to kind of kill this character when you can I think that makes sense. Um, I, you know, I was watching the way that the shooter has been playing on the stream for like modern. There's there's a lot of moments where he does uh, have access to using like the manual boost and certain things. So scaling, I feel like no matter what, like scaling won't be a problem for from Risa because of the damage that she's going to dish out regardless. But I think it's a valid point that you bring up for sure. I think overall, just having Quadriga, we're starting to see like how much of a game changer that is. Having Quadriga to let Mm, to make the departure dissipate is, is kind of genius. I actually didn't think about that up until he used it. I'm like, oh, that's a really interesting look to have in this matchup specifically. So really, 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 really well played thus far. But I thought to take away from Fenrich, I don't think there's too much that we could take away from his, his current play. I think he's doing just fine. But overall, he needs to find ways to close close out some of these matches and it's hard it's, it's looking very difficult yeah i mean i feel like the momentum is getting interrupted with these armored moves too as well maybe getting ahead of himself a little bit and up in that corner i don't I, but to be fair like i didn't really expect shuto to kind of strike back like that off the target combo you know being able to just run those normals i thought my man's gonna be blocking for a little bit longer but shuto a different beast right now is on set point Nice dash up counter hit. Gonna set up the departure again this time. Walking for it a little bit before he drive rushes in. A little bit different with that momentum is Finrich. Sit him down to Makairis. Drive rush forward. Block on the overhead. Forward throw. Punches the old man in the face. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Ooh, crouching right kick too, as well as an opener. Now seeing that button come through also is problematic. Two and again, going for the lows. What a pickup, Fenrich. Good block on the overhead. Forward, go back though, excuse me. Departure above Marisa. I'll take that, but you can't take too Level much two. more. Level two. Jump like oh. kick, able to catch him and kill the ghost. The ghost buster. Shoot though. Set point. He's too smart, man. His defensive knowledge is too smart, dude. Shuto is a different player, bro. Oh, that was sick, man. That's really unfortunate that the anti-air just whiffed like that. Maybe it was just mistimed. Oh, do Gladius to bust out. Air to air is fine. Back throw. Moving it on it is Shuto. Looking for something. Again, Quadriga stuffing it out. This is going to be more than enough damage. Shuto again with the full conversion. He had level three the whole time. He's sending the old man back to the old folks home. Yo, Shuto, I see you. That was brilliant, too. The chase down was there. The defense was there. And the conversions, triple threat. Shuto making phenomenal work. 30 points. Going to the side. Asai Shunkan, Soul Kumamoto. But previously, it was Soul that did not get the victory. It was Cyclops. Now they walk away with 30 points this time in this part of the season. And Shuto will move on to fight more JP players. But honestly, I was hitting him against a lot of JP players because his timing, how he's dealing with uh, the departure, which has been kind of ruling a lot of players neutral this entire episode, has been fantastic. I like his game plan. His space has been fantastic too. We saw him adjust himself and back up for the anti airs. Driver crouching light kick as an opener. That's on the table because you have yourself in classic. It's no longer, you know, in modern, you're lacking those tools. And that Quadriga kick, being able to send that out to kind of, again, delete that. Uh, I think that might be one of the most important things. You're in the mid range, you have this poke that now JP has to be worried about. Instead of just running Stan Pierce all day, you have that poke play to eliminate that option that rules a neutral. Agreed. Being close enough to enact violence. Shoot though, dang. Yeah.
Yeah, you think about how much of a different look it is in comparison to just using a drive uh, a drive rush. Like, a lot of players are looking for the green stuff and, and have their normal to counteract against, right? If, if you see a Quadruga coming at you and it's a punish counter because you're trying to react to a drive rush and use a counter poke, you're essentially dead. Like, if you get counter, if you get punished countered by a Quadriga from Marisa with, with drive gauge, you're actually dead. So, that's a lot of, that's a lot of, uh, uh, that much of a different factor con to consider overall. So I think having classic Marisa from Shuto is is so smart. I thought that was such a smart idea too. Maybe some of these interviews real quick. But again, I like that he's going with the classic and modern. We talked about how both are kind of like the groove system. You know, Ultra they were pointing that out. It's like a CVS2 groove system, and you use them for different methods, different character matchups, maybe even different players too as well. And Shuto pulling the most other character wherever possible. Nemo was thinking that Dogra was coming. He thought Dogra was coming up. And honestly, you kind of thought Dogra was coming up too. And as you kind of said that, I was like, maybe Dogra would be coming up considering how things have been going on against Shuto. But it ended up being Finn Rich and it ended up him being taken down. I'm curious to see what uh, what Shuto just embellishes on in terms of his strategy, but also a Gucci. I want to know like this movement sort of style to bay out, you know, reactions from other players or make them think that a boom is coming or or maybe mislead them. Yeah, yeah. I think um, Gucci just had a firm understanding pretty early on of what Goichi was trying to do, uh, despite being in the corner pretty early on and having the life deficit. Um, if you if you paid attention to the first game, I think that was Goichi's game to win, or at least uh, within the first couple of rounds, right? Goichi started things off pretty aggressively, getting the big jump in, shaking up uh, Higuchi pretty much to the point where he was found, where he found himself in the corner. Um, but yeah, Higuchi just giving him, serving him different looks. I think he, he could be one of the most aggressive guiles, uh, just because of how often he could change up his play style. <laughs> Um, but we'll see. I want to see him face off against like the U.S. candidates, or at least the North American candidates, right? I want to see him face off against like yeah. someone like a Kaba, someone like a Knuckle Dew, to kind of reenact uh, what had happened in uh, Central America East. It was like Brian D versus Kaba, the Galamir match. I really want to see Higuchi in there to see like the different styles of like Gal be put into play. But either way. Higuchi, uh, a man of few words, saying that it's a, it's nice having a 30-point game. No doubt. It's nice being able to get... Uh, I feel like for Higuchi, he's got to be feeling really good about himself getting the rebuttal against Chun-Li specifically, right? Mm -hmm, that's like I feel really good, especially after, you know, taking such a, a hard loss against Moke. He's going to set that matchup. And if you watch the stream, which you all should be watching the stream, he speaks fantastic English. Great person to ask questions for against Guile and, uh, you know, maybe other matchups that he kind of studies. But, like, he's always back in the lab immediately. We saw that in the previous league. Like, he blew up the, his stream, he go to the lab and find answers wherever he can. And I think the answer was playing against the player very well. Shuto says, I'm good at playing on the ground in Street Fighter 5. And I got to say, he's good on the ground in Street Fighter 6. But his air to airs were really good, too, as well. That jump heavy kick was a very common option as an air-to-air -air approach instead of just like the, the, the target combo. It's the perfect ranges. Like he had the perfect range for the anti for Crash Fears, the air-to-air -air jump heavy kick too as well. That was really good stuff. He said, I wasn't able to make it happen on Street Fighter Six, And again, I don't know if I agree with that because that footsie play, I don't make that literally, yeah. kick, was really, really good in how he's been able to call out these buttons against JP. But he is glad that he won. And again, we'll be glad to face more JP players, or maybe not. I think he's a liar. He says he wasn't able to make it happen in Street Fighter Six. I think he's a full-fledged liar. There's something. He's he's definitely playing the little devil role, right? He's trying to like have people pity him a little bit. But no, he's definitely been one of the the one of the goats. I feel like in terms of how his performance. And he was also one of the big point earners, right? We talked about like overall win records. There's certain players that have had like really immaculate win records, but it didn't amount to like as many points because they're only in like what maybe like the vanguard spot, the middle spot, etc. But yeah, Shuto, he had 70 mm -hmm. points to his name, uh, to his name prior to uh, the second phase starting. So in terms of like how good he is in the ground game, I'm pretty sure he's he's the complete package. Nemo is looking freaky. What is happening? What was that? What, what actually was that? But anyways, um, I'm sure Kabe had something to say as well. But uh, Shuto, the rest of it, he was glad, he's, he was glad that he won. Able to play against JPs again. Nemo... 
His final remarks were, we play away against one character. We need to practice it a lot next week. Oh, okay. I actually don't know what the schedule is next week. I'm kind of curious to see what that statement is. Yo, park that in the spaces of your mind for a little bit. Temporary 10-minute parking. We'll see what he meant by that further on. Let's take a look at the stats. 10 out of 13. 10 out of 13 with the anti-airs. Damn. Yo, absolute donuts from the side of uh, Fenrich, Lou? That's even more surprising. Who said Marisa had a hard time anti-airing? Who said that? Uh, Marisa players might have uh, mentioned that, but I feel like you've got good footsies like this cat. You'll be A-OK. -okay. You walk back, crouch, fierce, air to airs. We mentioned a jump heavy kick too as well, and was definitely on point to drop this character where he wanted him to be. And again, like, I feel like that's kind of a tail of tape, but also on the reverse side of things, Fenris not able to find Crouch Fears for heavy kick. These fantastic anti-airs from the side of JP, which lead to so much, also might have led to his demise too as well. So that's kind of crazy to see. You know, both players taking throws when need be because you don't want to get opened up. You'll die for that. Drop impacts landing from the side of Chuto more often than not, but all this led to Sai Shu console Kumoto getting 30 points and revenge against Cyclops Athlete Gaming Osaka, proving that the uh, old guard is still got it. I'm very surprised that there were no throws or not as many throws coming in from the side of JP, right? That was zero for one. Mm -hmm. Shuto only had to eat one throws worth of damage. That's pretty good. Like most of the time we'll see JP's kind of like attempt for a couple of more throws because of uh, departure. But like thinking about it now, I don't think Fenrich put Shuto in the corner as often. No, like in regards to like on average how often jps would put somebody in the corner right like that's that's a lot of right. missed throws that's crazy that's actually crazy only one attempt huh it's very surprising there's level twos i'm very surprised but uh maybe some of that was because Shuto yeah. was not in the corner too often we saw that him walking forward using the quad kit to get in the toe tap in that right middle range and not trying to get gripped up but i'm surprised there were no throws to alternate that offense but i'm not surprised that uh saishun kanso komoto was super strong this week i mean Haguchi himself got eighth at the world warrior you've seen the likes of Shuto clink clinch it out in the anchor position and even nemo even though he lost he'll uh, be able to strike back and uh already we see the ability to support your favorite players your favorite teams right here in the battle hub with these buttons what would you represent i feel like i'd probably rep you know maybe shinobiism gaming considering i like ken a lot oh i gotta go with cyclops man they have some of my favorite players man dogura on a personal level he's a friend uh kazunoko he's a hero i looked up to for many years uh that's two of four already so cyclops it has to be if cyclops didn't exist though i would have to go with gilgun because gilgun's been mad fun to watch thus far i really enjoy the character or their their, their personas if you will because a lot of that stemmed from previous seasons of street fighter league right we're currently in the second stage here of street fighter league japan for street fighter six so we got to change that graphic but we can't oh actually no we don't got to change anything my man i gotta i gotta i gotta say every time i see luke i think of street fighter five but this is the uh the new and improved luke for street fighter six but again you guys have been tuning in to a brand new season of a brand new game and it's been a very exciting time because the results also have been pretty brand new and unexpected but what you can expect is plenty more support coming in for a lot of these teams right a lot of the folks in japan have these viewing parties for all of these teams and i hope you guys can be able to do the do the same for your respective regions when it comes to street fighter league europe and have some of these watch parties whether it's on discord whether it's a gathering at the homie's house i'm going to be doing so as well and also getting myself ready for this particular mashup i did see this on twitter i only got to see little bits of details for it but i am kind of excited to see another one of these big mashups from the land of japan with some of the big time vtubers as well big shout outs to uh capcom and street fighter just for engaging with other communities and pulling more people in we see that with like the crazy raccoon stuff you know these other terms that have been happening in japan in terms of just getting people from outside of other scenes to pull them into street fighter and this is another collab that we're seeing and beyond that obviously we know the chipotle stuff i see a lot of people wearing their burritos in the battle hub i can barely even see the characters i feel like i've seen more burrito people more often than not nowadays i can't even see your characters but that's good that we do get to see these collabs come through in any which way 
And look at that. This, these look really dope. Yo, let me get that. Ken and that JP. Those look super sick. I don't even know who these supers are, but I kind of want to know who that JP one is. Or even the Ryu one. Yeah, so Ichi, yeah, it looks really, really cool. No doubt. I really like the fact that they've like collaborated with the VTubers to kind of have their likeness built into the character as well, which is really, really neat. Then you also have like the same kind of like characters. Well, sorry, the personalities of the characters still shining through. So uh i really really enjoy that it's like uh not too much of a clash i feel like which is great you know being able to express yourself and also have your personal persona really shine through and also keep it within like the lore of the game always always exciting but speaking of exciting times we still have one more game left we talked about the full course meal we'll get ready for dessert it's Gun going up against detonation focus me you do not want to miss it because again there is just so much on the line in regards to the early phases of regulation season i had to think about that word regulation season here in phase two right we're starting to see how many points are going to be gathered in and if you guys want to keep alongside the news hashtag street fighter six right again that's going to be so so important going forward but also even more important than that if you're following along with street fighter league japan at capcom underscore esports ladies and gentlemen we've got two games down one more to go Sankola, how do you feel about that I feel like it's going to be an exciting one. Gyogun, Detonation, focus me. Y'all better focus up and keep locked. When we come back from this break, there'll be more. Street Fighter 6, Street Fighter League Japan 2023 coming right at you. Don't go nowhere. こちらは違法アップロードではなく、クリップ機能であれば問題ありませんので、皆様が応募メーバー面をどしどしクリップ化しちゃってください。はい。さあ、それではこの後の試合準備のため、休憩に入らせていただきます。最終試合となります。第3
Back with Gilgun versus Detonation. Focus me. This is our final match of the night or day. Wherever you may be watching this, this is the last play that we're going to have for this episode. We're going to start off with Detonation. Focus me, who's been focusing up. We're going to start with the eyes on glasses. Attack on Happy Take. Fudo on that fantastic. DJ, right for that's gonna be the trickster himself coming with that Windy City Rashid. John Takauchi. After that is going to be Shippu Jinrai. Now men with that sick kin. We saw him take the likes of Tokido, who is next in his path. After that, last but not least, is the meal ticket himself, Itabashi Zangi, who has been working on a multitude of characters. This team was not focused on enough, but now that they're in contention for the playoffs. You have to make your eyes on them. Loving the confidence coming in from that nation. Focus me already. Is it going to be enough to face on the school of fish? Let's bring him down to the water kingdom. Starting things off with Prince of the Rapids. It's Mizuha starting things off with the water school. And I love the name too. And I love the cami, but going into it, we're going from water to the winds. It's the hero of Sunrise with the Turbulent Winds, the former Turbulent Winds, that is. It's Moke, ever impressive Chun Li, Mr. Optimal himself, from the Michael Phillips of Street Fighter. That's gotta be Macho Bo. And of course, the 2D God, no matter how you spin it, it's always gonna end up one way for him, and it's gonna be victory. Hopefully, we'll see in the eyes and the hearts of the God, the 2D God that was his, uh, that is Mago himself. Him so leading the pack, the School of Fish. You can expect, you can expect some pretty good results. Come on, Macho Boy. I know you want to do it. Come on, man. You got to do it. Give it to me. Ah, uh, he's not going to do it. He said, nah. <laughs> he said, no, no, no. I'm going to let y'all do it. Are you good, creepy sometimes, bro. He is, that is like terrifying. That is on some like horror flick kind of thing, dude. Like the ring type stuff, man. That's, that's terrifying. Yeah. Margo, man, it is that time of month, though. It is October. Let's see what's spooky it is spooky season. What team. Oh, that's true. Oh, speed of spooky. The switch up from Itabashi going with the uh, muscle mommy uh, Marisa. It's kind of wild. I'm Tell excited me what you think, for this. I'm excited for this. It's about time. Now, most of the time, obviously, Itabashi lives up to the name as a Zangief player. But midway through season uh, for Street Fighter V, I think it was season three or four, I can't remember exactly when, but as soon as Itabashi found Abigail, he made that switch, found a lot of success. Him doing it this early, though, is signs of promise. I think he's going to have a lot of fun with another big body through Marisa. Uh, I think also he's going to find a way to make the command grabs even more terrifying than it already is. And I think his footsie game, his ground game can be so intimidating. I think it matches him very well. I don't know what Mago's saying, but it sounds anime-esque. He's calling out for Machibo. Machibo's coming out first. I see. Hey, I feel like this is not bad, right? You're, you want to send in like the Ken player against Marisa? Yeah, I think Ken has a lot to say against this character. I mean, you have ways to cross up the OD Tatsu that gets really good against like Crouch Fierce. I guess the anti that you like to do that doesn't always work out in the first place. Ken has a great fireball pressure, you know, as pokes. Obviously, that called out with Superman Punch can be dangerous. But, you know, Machibo, though, has been getting better and better. Take a look at his record right now. I say that he has gotten better against. Bonchip, but then he lost to Sasamo, and then also lost to Sasamo in that first at death last time we saw him. Before that, he did win against Bonchan. He's 3-7, and seven, but I feel like he's starting to acclimate to the game better and better. Itabashi, his record, not so good. This is why I agree with you on that switch-up. It's been 0-3 so far. He has not found success. See if we can put the competition to rest with a new character and a new style of play. Yeah, it is looking kind of rough for both ends, right? I think Machibo not finding the success he wants, but he's found it against players that have been really problematic in the league, right? One of them obviously being against Bonchan in, in Section 10 of the first phase. Him getting the W against him shows that he knows exactly what he's supposed to be doing with Ken. And he also took a W off of Kazunoko. It's just some of the other characters that he's just not ready for, right? DJ seems to be his kryptonite, uh, kryptonite thus far. But looking into it right now, against another character like Marisa, I'm also very curious to see what type of work he's put in to face off against the muscle mommy.
Yeah, we talked about again this being a different sort of matchup. So I'm curious to see if he's going to be a little more apprehensive about fireballs because easier reaction against the fireballs is going to be the way to play when you're playing on modern. So that's going to be something he has to worry about. But when he gets in the corner, it's the same sort of business. You would expect throws and lows blow up this character. And, I mean, corner pressure. Ken has some of the best, if not top he three best. He takes you there, bro. I feel like, you know what? He might actually have the best. What am I saying? He does have the best corner pressure in the business, I feel like. You know what? You're right. It definitely is top one, the top spot. He'll take you there expeditiously, too, as well. I'm wondering what, you know, Itabashi has on Modern that will be able to stave that off. I've seen him play the Modern. I feel like it's, like, you know, in the early days when he was playing Gene and Abigail, he was like, forming those characters, they weren't really, really ready, prepared. But that was on CFN. That's a different sort of thing. This is League. This is a different sort of, uh, you know, arena. So I'm sure he'll be more than ready, prepared than if he is on a CFN messing around. Yeah. Dang, that was pretty cool. I don't know who that was. Uh, Can we get a translation on that? <laughs> I would we'll love to know what just happened. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a lot of hype going on with the commentators as well. But um, please, please, please do continue. I was actually kind of curious about that. Oh, it was a Twitter comment. Oh, okay. See, that's pretty cool. I love that they are able to like read off of that too. And it's using the hashtag, actually. They do that in between to gather up your comments. If you use the hashtag that is down below, um, the Street Fighter 6 hashtag that is in between. But yeah, we are gearing up and ready to go. It's going to be Modern Marisa versus Machibos Ken. So yeah, Itabashi Marisa versus Machibos Ken, excuse me. But yeah, you were talking about like this this matchup a little bit more too. Yeah, you, you don't really get to see this as often, surprisingly enough, right? Yeah, we don't have that many people in the U.S. that really run this character. And there are not that many, like, Marisa players, despite her being so good, that are able to take her to, like, the highest level. Like, Strider comes to mind. And really, in the U.S., like, there's very few. Obviously, Big Bird is probably the best in the business. We've seen him yeah, you know, conquer yeah. many, many matchups. Yeah, so. But, like, overall, though, you don't really see that many players play this character on Classic, much less Modern. But... However, Itabashi did say he was expecting Machibo either way, and he's ready for it. He did use a government, though, so he's already hitting him with psychic damage. I feel like that's a low blow right there, uh, Itabashi, but uh, I digress. So Machibo says, I face him a lot, but I'll do my best. So at least Machibo has some idea of how this man's played. They played probably years after years. They're both old school players, so they gotta that be, being yeah. said, it's they a different arena, bro. Yeah. Maybe they're actually friends. Maybe that's why he's using the, the, the names. The actual first name basis, but going into it right now, one of the things you look out for in the neutral, obviously, that Gladius could be so big, but also that neutral jump really important. Machibo getting the corner carry. We talked about one of the biggest weaknesses as Mariso. We started to see the tick throw already blocked, already teched from from uh, Itazan. So man, Puck would love to land it against one of these fireballs preemptively, but I do like the perfect parries though as they walk in. You want to keep that bar all juiced up. She's a thirsty girl, so to get that Oki going to phone, you need that drive gauge. Ooh, little mistake right there with that run cancel was not the leader for that. Now they send heavy kick, punish, counter, run, DP, caught up in the corner. Go for the damage out of that Oki because you already have him right where you want him. Oh, even Ooh. more so. Ugh. Machable starting to add on the layers. Trying to start things off with the phalanx. Oh, D uppercut, get off of me. Good risk to take if you're Machibo pretty early on. That jump here's got to be dangerous too as well. Crouch fears, predict predictive. So like a little bit more, uh, you know, oomph behind it. So that jump fears might be blessing that preemptively. Yeah, I wanted to see that crouching medium punch come into play against the trades for the fireball tactic. From Inazan, we're starting to see that a little bit more. And it actually intimidated Machibo, oh boy, from pressing any, uh, or throwing any more fireballs. This is the amount of control I wanted to see. No, he thought he was gonna sit still for it. And it's Machibo optimizing on this situation. Listen, his damage is gonna be pretty fair, but more importantly, he's gonna build back that drive gauge pretty soon. Right, oh, what was that? Heavy kick, run DP. Try to get something oh, in the super with that catch him. Yeah, he did. CA. See you next round. Now you know history. Damn, the smug on her face, the smug look on her face. Once she uh, wipes wipes her face with her fist. 
Ugh. Muscle, mommy. The same on Itabashi's face too as well. That's how you know he's made for this character. That is fair, yeah. He's definitely done that a bunch. Walk up throw off to the gen, right? I like that. Trevor Stan Pierce, walk it back. Maybe looking for Sand Heavy Kick, but has to be careful. I want to see Gladys a little bit more, but it is hard. That could be with Punish in rebuttal. Who knows, though? Oh. What a rebuttal. Just wake up medium Ew. kick and actually confirm the combo. Forward throw. You could do it again until death. The back dash two times over. Dash. That was sick. Eight is on. What? Double back dash. Are you kidding me? All those reads. Reversal wasn't baited. This is bad. No health on either side. However, much was in the corner. One good crash. Can... No, he gets all fireballs. He's in modern. And he is. Itabashi with those reasons. You see him already popping off the chair, dog. Don't let this man get happy like that. Don't let him smile. Was that was that modern? Was that nope. modern SA2? Because the damage looked pretty substantial. I, I can't, oh. I genuinely cannot tell. Oh, perfect parry. Oh, and she was still grounded for the crouching heavy punch. I don't know what she said, but fireman's carry backwards. Fireman's carry throw. Ooh. Oh, that means. This girl's got DP though. <laughs> I know it hurts when her fist makes content, though. Okay, Superman punch. You see the backup with that stand head kick again. Let things whip. Find a punish. Get this enhanced toxic for that corner carry. Things are getting extra scary. It's that spooky season. It is right here for Hidabashi. Back though for the punish. Got to get that kill. Yeah, very similar start from Achibo. Not able to close it out. Which is kind of funny, like most of the big uh, flaws of Marisa right now, I feel like it's her closeout ability without Super Art. Majibo is looking kind of in the same position, or at least condition, up until this point. We'll see, he does have full level three stocked. That's a counter hit, yeah, and he was ready to spend it. Yes, sir. If that counter hits, you are able to link a five frame normal. Not a perfect. Is Machibo. Oh, the little bait right there to stay a medium punch. Got those reactions still. Hidabashi's not done. Gets the knockdown. Gonna set up the throw. They burn out, but one Jinrai, one entry point. There we go. The OD to seal the deal, these lows. In the way that Macho was taking Itabashi in the corner and really making the most of it now in these rounds is what's allowing him to seal the deal, I feel like, more often than not. Round one. Yeah, we just have to see those more those instances more often and see a little bit more control and keeping Itabashi in the corner. But speaking of, I like that ender off of Dimakaris, just the charge sweep. That's pretty cool. I mm. you don't really get to see Shuto implement stuff like that either. Yeah. Dash up. Jams this time instead of a throw. No opening though. Watch waiting for anything. Actually he tries to get a jump in, but too far out though. There we go. That crouching mini punch you were talking about clipping some of these limbs. Now he gets fireballs just as a whip punish. Oh, that was sick. Back throw. Oh, it's not enough. She does have a little bit of extra health to her. No muscle. There's the throw nice. right after strike though. Continuously is blowing up Ida Bashi. This is Machibo, one set point. Oh, the anti-air wasn't there. The low four, even the Debashi was taken by surprise. Tries to react to the jump in. This is what really causes your downfall. Not expecting that to happen and also being put in the corner. That's a combination for disaster. On the way out though, Gladius in level three already. Machibo. Take a little bit of damage here and some drive gauge deleted. Itabashi with the lead. That corner carry also real extra nasty. Walk up, stand heavy kick attack. Throw does not connect. Finds that stand medium kick. Putting that option back in again. That stand heavy kick. Now getting a punish counter. No fault, but this is fine. Oh. Ooh, oh, that could have been a super. Yeah. He missed his chance. Look at the level two. Oh. 
The overhead is there, keeping it real cheeky. And the smile on Machibo's face, it was a little wry smile. He's like, that's what you get for using my government name. I wanted to make it personal. You want to bring it there, man. You brought out my government name? Well, guess what? I'm not going to optimize this. I'm going to make it personal, and I'm going to make it hurt. Machibo making a statement against Itabashi, and Itabashi is feeling it. That overhead is definitely him saying, like, I don't, I don't think your defense is there, man. I think your defense is a little sus. It's hard. I mean, we talked about the fact that, you know, the character doesn't have the best defense, especially up in the corner. He's lows and throws blower up continuously. But just the rotation of options continuously up for drive rush. And that sand heavy kick, he back up to let things whip. You get that sand heavy kick hit against Superman Punch. He gets glad he's at the right ranges. Even though we saw a jump as well, you know, maybe not always trying to follow, but enough to like really make you rethink of how you're going to approach the neutral. Gladys can kind of delete that off the table, but you have to space that out well or have that as a call out. And even then, Macho can just back up, send heavy kick, and find a punish that way. So that said heavy kick, even beyond the fireballs and things like that, also being problematic in that matchup. And uh, Macho Bo, so I took that personally. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he definitely did. But moving on again, uh, Inubashi, I, I think there was a couple of things that he did really well against Macho Bo. He deterred the fireball game from happening, right? That trade-off with crouching medium punch is something that's kind of common that Marisa players do, right? You can be within range to kind of uh, react to the fireballs being thrown out. Despite the trade happening and, like, you getting hit or whatever, the damage output mm -hmm. is so much more in Marisa's favor uh, on top of having um, higher damage output, but I think um, also having more vitality to the, than the other person than the other character is really, really important too. So I think that was really great. Washi establishing that very early is, is something to really take note of too. For Marie, any Marisa players, right? Just kind of paying attention to like the Shoto matchup. It's like, be sure to check the fireballs with crouching medium punch. I think there's a, a Big Bird does that a lot, actually. Big Bird's definitely one of the the, the main components of like uh, studying the, the Marisa matchup, one of the main players to study the Marisa matchup from. That's where I kind of learned that that idea, just having the trades going for Marisa because she's more often than not going to dish out more damage than she is taking it. So really smart plays overall. But taking a look at the stats. Damn, dude. The anti-air is five for five? That is actually mad impressive. That was from who? That was from, like, Machibo? Yeah, it was from Machibo. We didn't see that previously, right? Like, against the other Marisa player. Shuto, he's jumping in all dang day. Machibo said, not me. That won't happen to me, though. Wouldn't let that happen to me, though. And that's exactly how he deleted that. those options off the table. They find these jump ins get close enough to get the party started. And Ten points. I saw the Gyogun starting off strong. The Windy City kid himself. John Takauchi is coming up that Rashid. Cut has been developed even more as things have gone on. But as we pointed out previously, I feel like the character's problem is like these closeout opportunities. I'm wondering who's going to go up against this character in their team from the opposite position. I think Kami is not the worst option. You know, her aerial approach is kind of hard for Rashida to deal with all the time. Grounded, not so bad, but aerial approach to dot kick could be difficult. And it's going to be Mizuha. Okay. That's a good call out. That's actually a really good call out. I actually was completely unsure because you have two characters that could really uh mess with sheet up with the ground approach being so quick right i think chun lee or cami mm -hmm. would have been the play here but yeah mizuha is the one that's going to be stepping up to the plate and my man he is like platinum blonde right now that's crazy my man has such a shine on his head like believe me i i know good hair when i see it that's actually looking real clean jesus oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. John Takuchi, he's been kind of shining with this character right now. The first stage, he got four wins out of seven with that Rashid. And it was really towards the, the tail end of things. He had beaten Akira, and that just started uh, him beating Mago, Aqua, and Kazunoko. So he has some Kami practice, right? He's, he's proven that he can defeat Kami from Kazunoko. But Mizuwa, something about Mizuwa and how he chooses to use these buttons up in the neutral, in the corner, we've seen him use things unconventionally. We saw him use Sweep in Street Fighter V as an anti-air. He is just so aggressive, so powerful. We've seen him in World Warrior do a lot of work too as well. Despite that nice, you know, facade, my man is dangerous when he has hands on the sticks. We'll see what happens here. I'm, I'm curious about the approach. Doing a lot of aerial stuff to call out things for like the lacking anti-airs from the side of Rashid. The ground and play with like maybe spin against fireballs to start the party off. I'm curious to see what Mizuwa is going to present that's different than Kazunoko. 
Yeah. That's a good question, and uh, we're gonna find that answer very soon. To be fair, it's not a lot of, mm, not a common occurrence where you get to see a Rashid matchup versus a Cannon. So I think uh, by default you're gonna see an entirely different look just based off of a matchup that we don't really get to see. So it's gonna be John Takauchi, who has a record so far of four wins out of seven, earning him 40 points thus far, and uh, take a look at it. A lot of his W's came from Kami players, if I'm not mistaken, right? We mentioned that earlier, right? We got one against Akira while he was still around. We got one from Mago from Gyogun, right? Then we got one from Kazunoko. And the final section in phase one, pretty, pretty significant. You know what also is, you know what's also significant? Having a 100% win record. That is Mizuha. Four for four, baby. Four for four. However, he hasn't fought against any Kami's yet, right? Yeah, he hasn't fought against a single Kami. Sorry, I'm dumb. Rashid. He hasn't fought off against a single Rashid. So we'll see. At least not in the league. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm curious if he has any matchup knowledge. This is a character that even Bird, Big Bird had said, you got to lab this character out. He is a threat. Yeah, his antires aren't always the best. We've seen the... The Gachikun meme a million times. I've been playing Rashid lately and I feel for him. But even beyond that, though, Yasar comes out and about, bro, it is a lot down city. And someone like Tata Kuchik is going to have the uh, the trickster living up to that, that name with that mix. Beyond that, even in the neutral, you know, the drive rush buttons, not that bad. Like, light punch drive rush is actually fantastic. His neutral is kind of spotty. You know, you don't always, you're not always able to convert bridges you'd like to. Stamp Fierce is good. Crouch Media Kick is good. Other buttons a little bit on the stubby side. But when he's up close, we get a knockdown it, he is just really difficult to deal with in the corner especially too you do have the bust out obviously from the side of cami you do have your ways outside the corner but you don't want to be there at all like it doesn't matter if you have that reversal or not you just don't want to be there at all especially with yeah. some experienced rasheed player you know himself so we'll have to see what happens because i said i was born to face rasheed and beat him I'm gonna do what i was born for my man said i was born to fight an a tier character not even an s tier character an a tier character that's actually kind of crazy maybe he's got some sort of gripe with the character from the previous installment and i would not blame him like I, yeah. i'm totally in the same boat but we'll see how it comes to fruition here this is game number two sorry set number two between these uh Two players in the middle spot, already pretty aggressive. OD uppercut will get him out of danger here, but no. John Takauchi read that approach. Oh, he still got it. Yes, sir. Mizuha out of danger now. On that bust out. Takauchi said he got the flow right now. Once again, go looking for these like knockdowns off the eagle spike as, as soon as he can. But here we go. Back throw, punish counter, puts him in the corner. Got to make the most of this. No ear to ear. Oh, what was that? That was really awkward. Little bit of an awkward execution from Mizuha. Damn, that was a media bust out too. As soon as he got clipped by the forward medium. Punish counter? I like that. That's news to me. I'm gonna stop the suppression ASAP. I do like him backing up, looking for those hand tires right there with the heavy mixer at that right space in place. Finds the overhead level two. Gonna push him out, the tech, throw does not connect. Pushing him out again outside that parry situation. Still, up in the corner, and that drive gauge is getting deleted and depleted. Backs up, Stan Fierce. You're in burnout still, Buster. Oh, wow, it's still anti air. The heavy mixer coming through in the clutch. Counter hit. Oh, sorry, punish counter. Nice work. Rashid. Catching the landing frames. John Takauchi is on point. When he said, I got the flow right now. He was not kidding. That was actually really, really sharp and really well played. I'm liking this. John Takauchi really proving his mark, really proving his worth, finding the marks against uh, the approach against Mizuha. There we go, and I love that again. Okay, something different on defense. I like the perfect pair here from the side of Mizuha on the wake up, and now it's a side switch. Positional advantage. However, the roll through light, and look at this, just smothering Mizuha for medium punch. I feel like that was possible. He's about striking back, though. Stand heavy kick just sends it out. Finds heavy mixer. Plus, goes for the throw right after. Has to hold that. Yeah, I love that, too. It's such a... It's such a cool-looking combo. 
off of the roundhouse. See how he props up the opponent like that, allowing you to get the forward medium mm -hmm. punch continuation. Speaking of combos, low forward to start things off, ending at the eagle spike for all of the corner carry. Really, really important for Rashid. Four. Does hit another punish counter, but this doesn't lead to as much, but it's more so pressure, which Mizuha is a two and two. Yeah, he threw out the OD pressure or OD uppercut just to counter that pressure. Yeah, let's get the devil out for damage. The anti is right there. Stand heavy kick of all things to clip that dive kick. Dashes on in with that throw, trying to bait out anything. Gets another punish counter throw this time, actually. Off in the corner. Makes her, gets a cross, you kick. He's a final conversion after this to spin to win. Does get the throw right after, though. Man, this is so risky. No way. Yo, Mizuha was locked down. He was actually close to death. That was almost match point for John Takauchi if he could secure it, right? That was actually chip territory. OD oh, spinning mixer. Get off of up. me. Oh, big punish counter as well. Send up the Asar. Going forward, forward throw. That was a punish counter. The mix. Such a big win right here. Down below. Is that crouching light kick? Oh, the Super optimal stuff. Kick coming. Uh, toward Finish the end. Uh. Oh, oh, no, it wasn't low. It's, get the throw. it's like crazy. That's actually so scary. John Takauchi not getting the jump fierce low enough to the ground to continue on with the level one. That was scary, but he still managed to pick it up against Mizuha. That was actually terrifying. Is that two games straight? That's two games straight. Two games straight. Mm. I mean, he's at least got around. I mean, like, but two games, two games straight. The aerial approach, just, it felt like it didn't matter. You know, one of the ways you can play in terms of anti airs, you could back dash, go for the heavy mixer as an anti air option if you well space it. And the timing was also really good, too, as well. I feel like Mizuha just did not have a handle at all on the ground and even in the air in the SR, making the most out of that situation, pushing him back so he can't just hold parry. Lands a throw and then puts him either through burnout or through damage. You saw that crouching light kick opening him up and uh, finishing the job. Yo, John Takauchi, too dangerous. Way too dangerous to be left alive. But hey, guess what? He lives to fight another day. There's 10 points to his name, John Takauchi, looking pretty sharp early on. I really like this. I'm not going to lie to you, man. We're starting to see Rashid get developed. We're starting to see some damage on the table, but more importantly, the schmixurization. John Takauchi is looking like that guy. I'm loving that. But speaking of that guy, we have DJ from the side, from the hands of Fudo coming up in just a little bit. But before that, we got to take a look at the stats. 60% in regards to the anti-airs from the side of... My man, John Takauchi. Not too bad, right, in terms of trying to stuff out Kami's approach. But also, man, Mizuha's numbers are pretty consistent as well. That's actually really, really nice. I might be reading it backwards. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're right. Okay, cool. No, the bust out. Four out of four. Yeah, man, four out of four is fantastic. But it's wild because it didn't lead to too much in terms of staving off that pressure and approach besides John Takuchi. My man kept going in to get his win. And I feel like I've been watching JP play and uh, a bunch of other Rashid players play. They're keeping on that offense as much as possible. I feel like if you let off that gas, it, it feels like it's difficult to regain it, especially because you don't have the damage unless you're in the corner, you have a lot of resources, or you have Yasar backing you up. But I feel like John Takuchi has finally figured out how to play this character in this game. And those anti-airs, three out of five, 60% is a lot against Kami and more so with Rashid. He even backed up for the heavy mixer and even better, didn't give up a lot of room. Usually you're backing up for that anti-air to actually hit, but he does not give up a lot of room and not giving up any points for his team right now. 10 to 10, taking down a little bit of Gyogun, but they're not done yet. You said DJ's coming up. Udo, the world warrior champion of the fourth one of Japan. Who will be facing off against him, I wonder. I'm really excited about this one in particular, right? I think Fudo, as explosive as he's been, he's really started to put started to put the different looks of DJ on the map. Right. What's this city like a Pokemon? I said, go, Moke! I choose you! I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I wanted to hear if there was any response from Moke, okay, but I guess I guess not, man. Um, but anyway, I, I, I digress. I think uh, 
in the hands of Fudo, DJ is looking really, really strong. So I'm really excited to see it. Fudo's DJ in the uh, in last week's matches, right? He had to face off in the sudden death match. We saw how crazy he was, but also facing off against Ryusei. Listen, man, he's been he's been so potent with like the pinpoint precision in his footsies. It's kind of nuts, man. If if a DJ could land a clean punish punish counter hit, it, it could lead to so much. We always talk about the damage that a DJ can dump out. Sometimes it's a little difficult to land outside of just going in with drive rush. But Fudo, he's made it work without a drive rush, and that I think that's the most impressive thing. That's a really important thing to know because I feel like a lot of DJ players kind of burn themselves out really quick. They spend a little bit too much bar. He just walks forward, uses the dashes, and you're like, you're expecting him to like drive rush forward and counter that. He's just willing to walk on in to get his win and just kind of drive rush forward when he feels like it's appropriate and applicable. But can't count out Moke though. Five out of eight wins so far from his side of things. He's been kind of like a sleeper hit out here in Street Fighter League. I think one of the biggest point earners for his team and, you know, doing well up in the league just in general. Last time we saw him, he defeated Nemo in that first and one first to death. Before that was Haguchi, as we talked about previously. Then before that, I took it down Nemo again. So he is maybe still off on the best foot, but he is now doing fantastic. <laughs> yeah. How many other DJs did he have to face off against? There had to be more than one. That is for sure, right? I think, like, uh, overall... There's uh, how many DJs do we have in the league? There's gotta be a bunch, right? Uh, let me take a look at it one more time. Yeah, man. Pugera also was one of them, but he's gone. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I was kind of curious to see how often he's faced off against some of these DJs, but maybe that's a question for another time. Let me take a look. Uh, let's see. Moke. Okay, so we do have Yamaguchi. Moke beat Yamaguchi in the anchor spot. Three games straight. He's pretty familiar with this matchup, I would say, which is why I guess Mago was so confident in throwing him out there. Yeah, Moke himself says, I'm pretty confident facing DJ. I'm going to win, right? Oh, uh, don't say that. When people say, I'm going to win, right? That is like a showing problem right there. The, the, the guy says, I'm going to win, and then he ends up losing in a few chapters after that. We'll see if that happens, if you can change up the tropes. Fudo says, I lost the, last mo uh, lost the most to Moke, and I practiced with Tachikawa. Remember that in Detonation, they do have Tachikawa as a coach, and he has been definitely helping out in terms of getting them into form. And even better, I should say. So I'm curious to see if that practice will be uh, good enough to take down Moke. That's a dominant win on one of the best DJ players. I guess the other best DJ player in the business in Japan. So I'm curious to see what that new game plan will be from the side of Moke. What Fudo has in store. He's off his win from World Warrior. So you know he's going to have that energy going in this match. Yeah, Tachikawa is, uh, now that he's a free agent, he is helping everybody out, dude. Like, I feel like every single one of these interviews these last couple of weeks have been, I've been practicing with Tachikawa. I've been doing this with Tachikawa. In fact, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but every intermission we have that segment of, like, how to improve your game with Fudo and guess who? Tachikawa. So, Tachikawa. that's, one, that's really cool. Two, my man needs to, like start up a training business he can't be sure he can't be giving off these drafts for free anyways i digress fudo versus moke here we go in the anchor spot wow what a trade what? with the follow-up too as well that was sick yo fudo's always ready with it oh no not ready for the anti-air classic curse we're gonna save something no we don't after 10 show kicks we don't Sway playing in. Uh oh, here's Moke up in the corner. Backing up, maybe looking for Drive Rush for a bust out. Now caught back to mid screen. Fudo will ride that momentum to get that crouch fears. Jump in. Mm, sharp angle, no charge, no anti. It's hard. Two. Jump forward. Side switch. Moke. I thought it was going to be a corner carry scenario for Oki. What a time to throw in the side switch. Fudo, not ready for it because he was in burnout, right? He couldn't utilize any sort of reversal uh, tactics to stop the mix from coming. Oh, the knee shot. Oh, last second. Moke got clipped. Level three immediately try to kill that drive gauge. More important to get his back, put himself back in business. Close to the corner two as well. That dash in for medium kick again. 
not drive rushing in. He's using that walk speed, the dash speed to get in, to really make that bar count. Come into that crouching meaty kick, but here's the side switch, jump in, spinning bird kick, meaty, walk up throw, punish counter two as well. So now, this is bad, Pluto's in burnout. For one, and six of the drive impact, Moke with the sneaky sword of sauce, the sneaky sword of play. You've he's, seen him sneak in drive impacts every... He's sneaking in the sauce. He's, he's just... Make sure you're not even looking midway through the bite of your burger. He's just... Just a little bit of the secret sauce, huh? Just dump a little bit in there, huh? It tastes... Why does it taste so good? It's like... I don't understand. I don't know. It tastes, it tastes like drive impact. I don't know, man. I don't know if that tastes good or not. It's just... Oh, no. Not it tastes like a drive impact sandwich. <laughs> I like it though. I do like that. I think Moke had a couple of really, really significant looks there, right? He had the first mix up uh, with the airborne reset and now the mix on the ground game with the drive impact. I think that's a lot to really consider because Fudo is one to kind of really uh, take that to heart. Um, not in a sense that he's going to take it like negatively. He's going to add that to his repertoire in terms of like what he needs to do for defense. Keep that in mind for the next one. That's where Moke really starts to kind of like play his game. I think he establishes the recklessness early and then plays it out with, with, with fundamentals afterwards. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes out further on. That's a really good assessment because we've seen him kind of put those drive impacts, sneak them in and make the other player feel real uncomfortable as the set goes on because you're like expecting that to happen and that fundamentals of footsies just staying real standard when need be is all he needs to get the victory. And we'll see what happens though for Pudo to switch it up. I feel like Pudo and Bruno a little bit more often than we've seen him. He's not just drive rushing in. He's just not getting off that bar as much as he'd like to in terms of damage dealing. Let's we'll see if we can add a little bit more on the table in terms of dumping it out. Oh, the OD fireball. Not even the follow-up though, but I like that. Clipping that call at the fake fireball from the side of Pudo. So Bato, max range. We have to be careful. Close can be punishable. Word? What a time to throw out the crouching media punch, and I like that. Not afraid of the follow-up from Moke. Yeah, especially after a light, it is going to be your turn to press. It's just a matter of if you're close enough to get frame-trapped by the Gatling, right? If you're close enough to get chained up, I guess, because you can chain-cancel your normals, your lights specifically. Not all normals, only your lights. Oh. Sorry, rush, crouching, mini kick. Yeah, caught the sway play. Backs up, Tisho. Yeah, it's it's hard, and I definitely get it. Don't want to risk just missing. Drops the elbow in the fireball. Fudo getting a little bit more structured in terms of his normals and his approach as well. But these fake fireballs are getting called out more often. Not here from the side of Moke. Okay. Goes for the overhead right after. Look at Bell up in the corner. Tensho kick right after it. Come on, fake baby. Knee shot on the way over. Counter hit from the side of Fudo, throwing in the fireball. And man, the OD uppercut to stop the drive rush completely. And we got to go for a target combo into level two. I thought it would be level three, honestly. But it's fine. He wants to save the meter. But hey, actually, no, it's not the same. it doesn't work the same way. DJ's level one is not striking vulnerable. Oh my god. Song 10, Ronka, critical art. The damage. Towards the wall, not dead yet. Get that bar back. Try to throw out the drive impact before you get that bar back, but Moke, he's got drive gauge. Crushing light kick too far off for the follow up, though. Daring him to finish the play, the dash in against the fake stuff. Again, these fake outs have not been catching Moke slipping. Damn, drive rush forward sweep. It could have been worse. But it is the big opener for Fudo. No punish counter. He's look, he's fishing for some of these just cools. And I think Moke is two steps ahead. There's the punish counter. It rings out exactly where Fudo wants it. Level two. Uh, uh, we got the beat. We can also force the burnout. Yeah, exactly like that. Forcing out the burnout with the meter. Getting the auto, sorry, the, the automatic impact, really. It's almost a wrap. OD, just cool. And the Grand Sosso bots to almost seal the deal. They're back in business. They got Whoa. bar. Oki drive rush. No shot though, right? It's only one hit. I don't That's know, all man. Fudo needs at this I don't point. know. He's in burnout, so he could he could get it. He could get drive impact. What an oh, anti he can definitely get drive impact now. Goes with level oh, two. Oh, level two. That halts the that halts the momentum. 
of the drive gauge. No way! He dropped it! Oh my god, he dropped it. He actually could have gotten game. I think if he had finished the combo, he could have gotten level one. Oh my god. Oh. I, I think he could have got level one off of that. That's hard. Crazy. I'm okay. Let them all roll off. You see him challenging that drive rush right there. ODDP bust out here from Fudo, but Moki's not giving up any ground. Or heavy kick to get the punish counter. No follow up, no back throw. Puts him in the corner. Scramble situation, but Fudo staying solid. Perfect parry. Back throw again. Nobody wants to be in that corner. It makes sense. No anti airs. Yes, sir. That was the first thing they practiced in the beta, being able to perfect parry against the chain normals. Level two incoming. Don't drop it this time, okay? Hey, 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 hey. Safe jump. Empty jump throw and gets blocked, but OD fireball coming in to save the day. Moke looking to clean it up after what had happened. All the scraps and damage left on the table from last round. I think he went for the OD fireball too as well. We saw Fireball to try to establish some rhythm from Fudo. Did not work out. Moke cuts through and now puts him on the east side of the screen. Too far out for that drive rush button. And now driven right back to the corner. Back dash, back throw. Fudo, gotta make something happen here. Come into the crouch fierce and now let's hold this throw up in the corner again and again. Oh, no. oh that's a big oh, trade off. So Fudo looking so clean with it. Level three. That's no, that's actually critical that, excuse me. Extra damage, but not enough to kill Moke right now. Moke is so close to South, but Driver Slide Punch is the clincher. We have him, see, we've seen him switch it up between dash, you know, walk up, four medium kick, things like that, catch Moke lack, and now even more Good drive gauge expenditure for these drive rushes. Yeah. Early too. Pretty evident with the side of Moke too, but now he's slowly building back his gauge. A lot of hits have been landing, but speaking of his landed, Fudo fighting out of the corner. That technical is going to be severely punished at the cost of what though? Is he going to put himself in burnout? No, sir. He's going to let the fireballs ring out, get the slow approach, and build up some of that drive gauge back. More than enough damage incoming level two so long as he doesn't drop it. I don't know if it's going to kill. Yeah, it's going to kill. What am I saying? <laughs> it's DJ, baby. That's killing. That's hella killing. Yeah. That's two games. The big rebuttal from Fudo. Man, the axis of damage, though. Like, the drive rush, I feel like we talked about how he's like, yeah, you don't drive rush as much. But I feel like he's like, I gotta go back to the old me. Lord, forgive me, because I'm about to go back to the drive rush city. Drive rush slight punch continuously. But at closer ranges where Moke has stopped it, but not every single time. When you mix that in with four medium kick and the dash ups and things like that, and you keep that pressure up, it's harder and harder to counteract. And I think that's fine for Fudo. Take back the initiative, because I feel like Moke has done that way too often, especially round start. And some of these calls too as well, like early Hazanchu and stuff like that have been clipping Fudo. So I can start the party as soon as you can. Drive a slight punch, mediums and things like that and make the most out of every conversion. And we see that from Fudo, he has done so. Even in trade conversions, he's been so ready. He is a lab rat, like he is a man of the lab. So he knows what to do in damn near every single situation. He says he's ready for Chun-Li. He looks ready right now. Well, see, I would love it. I, w I would love it if we could extend it to a full series between these two because the back and forth has been phenomenal. I think Moke, also, there's plenty of moments where he had dropped the ball, dropped some really significant damage for game enders, right? Had those have ha had that not happened, I wonder if how much of a different outcome it would be against Fudo, right? Not just in terms of like the games won, but I, I mean, like in terms of the overall performance. But here we go the Fudo of old drive rushing on in there. Moke in response also getting a dry rush off of a canceled normal. So you're already seeing the expenditure already. Punish counter off of that. Yo, the just cool coming in perfectly timed. Mini light punch counter hit for being a kid for the bus frames. Try to go for the throw on the way down, but no conversion again. Drops here from OK, not making the most of these opportunities like he usually would. So much activity here from Fudo. Jabs, just cool light kicks, looking for an opening and drive rushes in that back throw. Look at that damage. 
Hey, hey, hey. Didn't even need to spend any super arts. This is looking really clean. Fudo looking at match point already with two bars, too, to his name. Very early aggressive start. That trade could have been something serious, but now it's Fudo trying to take down that drive gauge. Oh, Tensho kick, of course. The anti is right there. Just cool. He interrupted. Loki trying to stay as compact as possible. And now sitting on some of these fireballs. You have to be so Come careful on. with that OD. Oh, the bait, though. The bait on the faint. And that far level thief flashing. Stance canceled. Oh, defense of Fudo is looking so scary. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That should be more than enough damage, too. And it's going it, it, to yeah, extend the combo the rest of the way through. That has to, yeah, that is more than enough damage. Fudo is going to be taking game number three. And even if they weren't dead, it's Burnout City. Yeah, no, of course. It's Saturday Night Fever, baby. It's Fudo putting Moke to rest. Three games straight rebuttal after losing the first. I like it. I love it. It's too bad that I can't get more of it. But I will say this, man. Fudo really really well composed bringing back the old him wow yeah. chef's kiss i love that where was the secret menu the whole time baby that's the old fudo dessert best part of our main best part of our three course meal baby honestly mvp i think of the day is fudo's play and just even going back to the old self where he i feel like that mid-range was so dominant we saw with the poison he'd be the type to dash up medium with poison more often than other poison players who like the zone this is the food i like to see being able to switch up that pace as much as need be, you know, using drive rush, light punch a little bit more often. You know, that sway plate, just a wall of buttons and options, things like that. It was hard for Moke to stop. And some some of this was Moke's fault, not able to convert when he should. We saw Fort Heavy Kick, and that was a punch counter drop right there. We saw him not converting off of, like, you know, when he would stop the drive rush. Like, you had it in your hands to really make Fudo a little bit more afraid. But if that's not happening, the Fudo's clear to go green. And so Fudo takes it for his team. That DJ looking ever so dominant as it did in the World Warrior, it does out here. Yeah, again, big ups to Moke as well. I don't know if he's ever going to hear the English broadcast, but again, that was that was in his hands. That was his game to win, and you know, he called it out earlier. I'm going to win, right? Question mark. He jinxed himself. He jinxed himself. Ain't no way to put it but other than that. Like, he jinxed himself. You gotta be feeling really good if your detonation focus me. 30 points to your name here in the second phase with their previous performance, only netting them 25. But taking a look at how everybody else performed, right? You know, we had two back to back sudden death matches from last week. So he was, they were pretty much at the above average spot with 25. But with how much to their name now they have 55 points that should be in the realm of third place if i'm not mistaken but yeah man really really well played really great start for detonation focus me which is something we haven't been able to say in a long time i think detonation focus me has had a little bit of a rough start in since their inception to the league question mark but I will say this, man. It's good to see the team fully acclimated right now, uh, especially with Fudo coming in now. I think Fudo, that big change to Detonation Focus, Focus Me's roster, having Fudo in it is pretty significant. Yeah, absolutely. Having Tachikawa as a coach as well, like to maybe help out and say, hey, man, drive rush a little bit more. I'm sure it's a lot deeper than that, but still. That's all deep, man. That's cheating. <laughs> You should drive rush a little bit more, bro. Hidabashi says we were expecting the orders, but we couldn't do enough. But it's great that we won. Uh, he's referring to himself as Marisa, maybe not being up to par, but I see the ideas. I see it there. It seems to be the execution, which I'm sure will get better and better. John Taguchi says, I don't think I'm confident in facing Kami, but I'm glad I won. You could have fooled me. Could have pulled a trick on me, bro. No treat. Because the way he played that, I think he was absolutely A-OK, -okay, but maybe it's a matter of if I smother him, he can't play footsies. And that's maybe the way that you have to play with Rashid overall because it seemed very effective. So shout out to John Takuchi. And Fudo says, I was able to get the damage as I, that I was aiming to get. We talked about trying to find X for damage that the character could deal out. Wasn't able to in the very first game, but after that, it was drive rush, light punch city. If not, the just cool light kick punish counter follow-ups to lead into a lot, especially at that very end. That was an insane sequence of had them at 60 percent yeah without a doubt and that was overall a great performance we didn't get to see nauman 
uh, play out. Obviously, he was in the uh, the bench, but even then, you know, Nauman, he had his performance last week. He got his W against one of the greats, Tokido, in the mirror match. So I'm positive Nauman's going to keep him going to be keeping himself as sharp as ever. I think it's kind of crazy, man. This guy is an Evo Japan winner. Now he's actually playing a character right out of the gate that is super strong. Right, he was struggling mm -hmm. with Sakura for a bit, so I'm glad to see him like navigating a a proper shoto rather than a pseudo shoto, right? But yeah, they were talking about their player order yet again. Nauman commenting saying that the order was nearly perfect. Ken is a good card to have, and I was prepared for it either way. So I think that's I think that's smart, right? Just having a Ken be prepared at any moment's notice is going to be pivotal to a. Uh, team's composition in my opinion it's not going to necessarily spell success but i think it's really important to have in in terms of like finding these big counters or even providing a a, a challenge spot in the away side right like if you have a kid on your team and you are you're forced to like be on the away spot it's like all right well Ken is always a safe bet to, to possibly secure points or keep points away from the other team, right? So it's a really great composition that they have. Yeah, you know, speaking about that, the composition is actually fantastic. You have a DJ, you have a Ken, fantastic characters. You have Rashid, who is, we have to laugh about that character and fight top level Rashid players to understand how he plays out. And then, of course, you have the wild card that is the meal ticket. Itabashi slowly getting that Marisa in form with his own sort of style. That's a dangerous team right there in the addition of Tachikawa. Gonna make it even more of a threat as they move on. And again, I'm glad that you also noti uh, notified that we are looking at a team that nation that is way better than the previous seasons. We haven't even seen them make it to like these halfway points that often or, you know, stay solid in these halfway points that often. Usually it was at the demise, but now they're looking just as strong as everybody else. Look at the side of Antires. Not a lot from the side of Fudo. It is hard to get that back heavy kick or have that charge consistently, but on the ground, he was A-OK. -okay. A lot of techs in play here from the side of Fudo, two out of nine at least. One on the side. Uh, Moke, drive impacts landing, I guess, one on both sides. But overall, I wish I could get a counter for drive rush hits overall. I feel like, or even trade combos, because those showed me that Fudo was just so ready for damn near any situation. Trade combos especially, but the drive rush, when he put it in, was hitting well enough that Moke couldn't stop it and stuff it continuously. We've seen him stop a lot of people that have been drive rushing continuously, like with swift thrust with lights and things like that but not now that means that fudo hit that in expertly yeah dj is a little bit faster than other characters with that and he has a great light punch button and things like that and sweep but the way that fudo hit it in to get that win expert expert dj play also pretty uh much on the nose when it comes to his expertise is not throwing out the od reversals we didn't really get to see those big bus outs from the side of Fudo, right? As risky as it can be, it's also a really big deterrent, but maybe it's because there hasn't really been a moment for him to actually consider it. So uh, I'm going to have to watch that over again. I want to watch like what the sequences were from the side of, uh, from Moke in regards to his quarter pressure, because again, Fudo, him standing his ground with no OD reversals is, is a pretty confident thing to say. But talking about the confidence, he's got three games to his belt again, in comparison to Moke's one. I'm telling you, man, if you have Tachikawa as a teammate, or I guess most teammate, right? He's, he's, the, he's the secret fourth man. Man, what he's the fifth man, I guess. He's Kuroko yeah. Nobasuke. Um, he's he's definitely a very pivotal coach, right? He's been he's been sh helping a lot of these cats like find success. And and even Itabashi had mentioned it earlier, right? Tachikawa has been a great coach for us, and we'll do our best for him. That's a pretty significant statement to make. But even more significant is the amount of points. Again, Dead Nation focus me. 30 points to their name, at least today, this week. In totality, I think they got 55. Gyogun still looking to stay afloat, right? They're slowly swimming upstream. Gyogun actually got a W against Saishun Console Kumamoto last week. They're sitting at 35 points, if I'm not mistaken. But it does set us up for next week, right? Next week is going to be 
way more impactful in regards to changing up the points because again some of these leads are a little bit further out than normal i think ffv gaming if i'm not mistaken yeah ffv gaming has a pretty substantial lead above the rest of the pack but we'll see as we break it down further and further but that's been the main course i hope you had all that room for dessert it was been uh pretty delightful thus far to watch Goga and detonation focus me but overall let's take a look at the current stats the current points right yeah. Shinobi's in gaming taking or I'm sorry faltering to FAV gaming this time and then Saishun Kanso Komoto 30 to 10 against Cyclops athlete game Osaka as you mentioned detonation focus me getting that 30 to 10 against Gyogun very surprising result especially at the beginning right there FAV gaming taking it very dominantly against Shinobi's in gaming all these runbacks it seems like they were able to get the clap back and get the victory and rebuttal so you can never tell who's going to take it in the very end you know, these teams learning from their losses and focusing up and uh, understanding what they need to do to get that victory in the end and that, that just makes even better street fighter even better league play and this is the point differential right now fev gaming right now at 60 detonation only five away size from console komoto 50 and then we see kyogun at 35 Shinobiism at 30 and Cyclops at 20 at the bottom. The new kids and Shinobiism need to get to that fourth place position to stay alive for the playoffs. Yeah, those bottom three teams, man, when it comes to week number three, if they can't find their success there, it feels like it's been uh, historically a really rough spot to be in, right? After week three takes off, if they don't find those points, even in the slightest, it could just be perhaps lights out we don't want to see that not this early especially with how prominent shinobiism gaming was towards the end of their run in second phase and also how dominant cyclops athlete gaming osaka was throughout the entirety of phase number one but again seeing those two at the bottom is a very very interesting predicament that they find themselves in however there's still plenty of games to play right i don't even remember how many sections we have it could be like what 12 again perhaps and i'm not even uh i'm not even too sure of it but one thing is for sure we do have ourselves a very very thorough chart to keep track of every single week in case you might have missed it and hey speaking of by the way we should be getting into our scheduling uh not too long from now just a reminder for the folks at home we will be taking a little bit of a break this friday right no matter what area you're in it will be on friday because everybody will be traveling out to the Singapore offline premiere happening this weekend on October 20th through the 22nd. So again, a lot of the players will be doing their traveling probably a day before, two days prior, heading over to Singapore. So that's why we'll have a little bit of a hiatus, but fear no more when it comes to the scheduling. It will be coming up very, very soon to let you guys know what's coming up next. 27th is when we'll resume. Saishu Komoto going up. It's Detonation Focus Me. Cyclops, Athlete Game Osaka. Need get some points. What has to go up against a top spot team as FAB Gaming. And of course, Gyogun. The rounding things out against Shinobiism Gaming, as you put it. These players need as many points as possible. Don't be lacking and slacking as the league goes on. It's going to get even more difficult. And I'm curious to see what's going to happen after they pull all that knowledge and that gameplay expertise they get from the Singapore event, win or lose. It's going to yes! change up a lot that happens out in the league, man. It's going to pull up so much matchup knowledge, so much data. Like, the push of the meta is going to go even further. That's going to make the next match that we're going to see and continuously as 27th, 31st, and, of course, we're going to November even better, even more exciting. Oh, so we are taking a break for the offline premiere in France. Good call. Good call. Street Fighter, uh, Street Fighter League Japan definitely on it. You can see the little bit of a break immediately after Halloween. Ooh, Halloween time. Real spooky. We get into it again November 10th as well as November 14th. You guys want to mark your calendars as well. We have so much action for you in the realm of Street Fighter League. Europe is starting to shape up as well and get themselves started. U.S. also just about to start. And for very good reason because we are amping up the Capcom Pro Tour, especially with the overall prize pool. Over $2 million up for grabs. But, of course, that lion's share, the life-changing money of a $1 million being awarded in the first place. And here's... Your there are plenty of ways to qualify with the online premieres. Some of it already underway, underway right now with 18 players, right? We've already established a couple already with offline premieres coming up as well. World Warriors are starting to round out as well. We've already gone through our fourth one for a lot of these regions. And of course, the last chance qualifier. And in case you missed it, right? Well, I feel like right now, the offline premiere for Singapore, I think the registration has closed. But for Paris Games Week, for November 3rd to the 5th, 
if I think France might be open. So be sure to check it out. Start.gg. Don't miss your chance. And I know Zafarino just to kind of like throw us out there. Some players, they made it out last minute to sign up. You guys can too, if you're, especially if you're a competitive player. But of course, yo, we got... Ah, I see we got the talent lineup for offline the offline premiere in Singapore. Yeah, I've been seeing some of the people also be invited from the English broadcast too as well. Uh, Yipes, Shots Marine, and of course Sejam making his return to, uh, and I would assume Mike. But I see my boy si uh, Sasa up there with Aru. That's going to be great no matter where you watch it at. Make sure you all tune in and watch Singapore. I definitely want to be tuning in myself and be watching also the Paris one when that happens because there's only one spot per event that's going to make all this action super heat, super fire, super amazing, to be honest. And of course, we saw the World Warriors and CPTs, but we're all gunning towards the finale of Capcom Cup Finals next year at some time, I would assume early. But we still have a lot more Street Fighter League to go through. We're going to take that break. But when we return from everything, it's going to be even more meta being evolved. Maybe even more character picks. Who knows? It could be a lot of exciting things to see. Maybe even more Aki. That's a character we haven't yes. seen yet. And I'm expecting character players like uh, Johnny to maybe play that character and whip that out and really uh, shake up some of these uh, standings a little bit. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen. I want to see some Aki in top eight. I also want to see this big old chair, the gamer chair, coming into my house. I want to see that in a cardboard box so I can assemble it with the Chun Li theme. I can appreciate that. Yes, sir. We have so many different collabs going on with so many different peripherals. It's been really refreshing uh, thus far, too. But you see uh, also the registration live right now. Again, we talked about how many events are going on in the, Cla the Capcom Pro Tour. Uh, obviously, we got the offline premiere happening this weekend. But after that, we have the registration, I feel like, for Europe Northeast currently happening. And that's going to be happening the weekend after. So also World Warrior Japan number five. Ooh -wee. We're slowly finding that conclusion, man. You don't want to miss it. Mark your calendars. October 28th. In the meantime, it's been an absolute blast being able to serve up a full course meal to you all yet again in the realm of Street Fighter League Japan season number six. We're getting closer and closer to figuring out who's going to be sent over to Capcom Cup to face off against all of the other champions, whether it's from Europe, whether it's from the US. We're also going to see who's making it to the big dance from the singles tournament. Either way you spin it, it's going to be exciting and it's going to be damn near godlike in the realm of Street Fighter Six from our table to yours we highly encourage you guys to check it out even further and we deeply appreciate all the love and support you've been throwing us our way on social media in the streams in the chat we see you and speaking of we'll see you again for the next one take care good night be safe have fun <laughs>決勝大会に出るかっていうのは次回決まりますしはいそしてま一発切符のオンラインプレミアもね日本大会の方ありますのでまぜひちょっとあの本当無料なんで気軽にもう記念参加でいいんでねあの気軽に一回こう参加していただ